Kanpai! Kanpai! We'll <laughs> never get this time correctly. Never. Nope. It's, it's, mm. It'll be a mystery to everyone. <gasps> Amazing, it didn't give me a new beer this time. It's the first week it hasn't. Lars, it's your intro. What? We literally said this <laughs> two seconds ago. <laughs> you have to warn me about these things when I'm actually. <laughs> we literally <laughs> said it two <laughs> seconds ago. Don't recall a single thing. Hello, everyone. Whatever. There, there, there. Hello, everyone. And welcome to Campai Cast, episode fifty-four. The essence of a good protagonist slash antagonist. Right. And I shall begin. I am. Um, I assume there's a button to make people's names appear. So I'm gonna make people's yeah, names there is appear. a. I mean, we won't see it, but they will. Wow, things. Okay. Uh, I am MDR Laws. <laughs> this is Xenogalia. This is Na- oh, That's a point in different directions. This is Xenogalia. This is Naz. Down about that. And below me here is Itos, our special guest for the week. Say hello. Hello. And I wanted everyone to say hello in one go. Sorry, hello! Guys, no, you can't wait! <laughs> hello! Tip. Wait, your timing! <laughs> timing! Three, two, one. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you know, sucks. Right. Anyway. <laughs> Hello. Wait, oh, you, no, you can't do it now. <laughs> but I just did. The essence of comedy is timing. Exactly. <sighs> comes in threes. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. So the housekeeping of the week. Just to remind everyone, we have timestamps and chapters allowing people to navigate the sections of the show. They're interested. You are. They are. You are. You are interested in watching. So, for instance, just below Slitherito in about there. Yeah, about there-ish. There'll be a mm -hmm. little thing. Click that and a pop-out will appear now on the side of Xena, uh, where there's all different sections if you want to see the different sections of the show, which we put all the timestamps in. YouTube, however, does not let people know this exists. I imagine they'll remove it in about three years because they'll put this amazing feature <laughs> in and no one uses it. Anyway, moving on. So, someone's let all our likes out of the pen. But they're too young to be out on their own. I read the teleprompter verbatim. So if you and I didn't write it out, bringing them home, that'd be great. All you have to do is hit the thumbs up on this video. We're also deaf, so we also require sounds to make us wake up at the uh, to do these shows. You need to hit the bell as well, because you know. Mm, every I didn't bell think of that. Yeah. From a distance, like oh, that was one just now. Could you hear that? It might have been uh, somewhere in Asia. Someone hit a bell. See, it's just we can hear these throughout the entire planet. It's what we do. Right, let's begin the proper section, which is the anime news with Nazareth. Right, well, as always, any interesting links you hear uh, will be, or any interesting stories you see here, we'll have links in the description below, along with the timestamps. Uh, another agent, legend of anime lost to the world. Voice actor Motomo oh. Kiyokawa passes away at the age of 87 due to complications of pneumonia. Uh, he's likely most well known to, you know, most weebs as Kozo Fuyutsuki, Gendo Ikari's partner in crime. Uh, but he's also played a ton of other roles, including Walter and Helsing, both the regular and ultimate versions, Norman in The Big O, Temray in Mobile Suit Gundam, and Gargoyle in Nadia the Secret of Blue Water. So, yeah, done a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Uh, so, uh, prices for PlayStation 5 have gone up in several countries. N uh, notably, Canada has gone up about $20, UK has gone up about £30, uh, the rest of Europe has gone up fifty pounds, and Australia has also gone up fifty dollars. The U.S. gets to skate by on this one, so we're we're lucky. Uh, also, I found out that the, the the pound and the dollar are about equal right now, which what yeah, is crazy. Yeah. It bullshit. swapped from it was like it's always sit around like one point six to like one point four, mm -hmm. but then it tanked like yeah. about a month ago down to what even. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What the fuck yeah, did we do? It's crazy. Uh, who knows? Well, I can tell you what we tried and do, but we'll be here all night. <laughs> welcome, welcome to uh, the money cast. Uh, so this one, this one is really interesting. The Association of Japanese well, Animation. Uh, Sorry, can I just correct you there? Um, on um, on xc.com right now, one dollar is worth eighty-five p. So it's that's yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely wow. crazy. Jeez, even wow. more now. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so the Association of Japanese Animation has launched a new website with one of, if not the most comprehensive database of anime titles, including release date, staff, voice actors, 
Uh, and, and other stuff too, I think they, they had on there. The site is called Anime Tyson, which is translated to Anime Complete Works, and it can c- concurrently currently contains entries for fifteen thousand titles going all the way back to nineteen seventeen. Uh, they plan Jeez. to continue maintain. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, they plan to continue maintaining and adding to the site, noting that some titles have lost their information over time. So, hopefully, there will be a translated version uh, of the website in the links below. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah, fifteen thousand going back to nineteen seventeen. I can't believe it. Uh, so this is this is fans of fans of the show will probably know that we love Konosuba. Kanokawa's mm-hmm. YouTube channel has a new trailer for Konosuba: An Explosion on This Wonderful World spinoff series that confirms it's coming in twenty twenty three. I mean, we already kind of knew that, but still. Uh, and so that's that's the first trailer for the for the show that we have. Um. Also, Studio Trigo announced that they'll be releasing a movie in 2023 as part of the Gridman universe. I know Xeno likes Gridman, uh, mm. which includes SSSS Gridman and SSSS Dynazenon, which are apparently both in the same universe. Uh, so this is going to be a crossover for the for the two of them. Uh, okay. Uh, and also for Xeno and Laws, who, who just got done playing... Oh, do you also play you know, Alice? I used to. I used to. I really uh, love the visual and storytelling design. I just didn't stick with it, but it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. Uh, still so, <laughs> yeah, abandoned us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Sino Alice released its first tie-in graphic novel. Uh, according to a, review, a reviewer on ANN, the art gets a B and the story gets a C minus. But she admits she hasn't actually played the game, and so the split reality thing was difficult for her to grasp. And uh, that's that's kind of fair. I don't know if. Uh, play, I didn't read the full review. I don't know if playing the game makes it better. Um, but yeah, if you if you like the game, might might want to give it a try. If you don't like the game, then maybe skip it. I don't know. <laughs> the slow burning tragedy that is the Full Metal Alchemist live action movies are nearly at an end. Netflix announced that the third movie, The Final Alchemy, is set to stream September twenty fourth. The good news is that September also brings Cyberpunk Edge Runners, the second part of Stone Ocean, and Drifting Home, all of which we are desperately desperately waiting for just um, not not full metal alchemist uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the second oh one the second one just aired so they they I, I knew they were recording or working on both of them at the same time but i didn't realize they were gonna air quite yeah. That quickly yeah i guess they want to get it over with too <laughs> probably <laughs> on a, uh, speak- on a re- on a related mobile game note there's a crossover with epic seven and full metal alchemist brotherhood right now Ooh, which I thought was cool. Uh, I was like, that's a neat IP crossover. <laughs> we need more full metal, full, full metal alchemist brotherhood. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of Netflix, by the third week of its release, the live action Resident Evil already dropped completely out of the top 10, which reflects scores from both Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. So after only eight episodes, no surprise, it's been canceled. I, I'm actually genuinely kind of sad about that because I actually enjoy, out of all the Resident Evil stuff we've had, Right as uh, not games, that's mm-hmm. the only one that I've actually enjoyed. Right, that actually had a, a semi decent plot. What? Go, go go sit in the dunce corner and just. No, <laughs> no. And then tell me a better one. Feelings like the people. In- I'm not saying better. I'm saying that that was awful. Let's talk just people be, sitting just in because it's the best of its feelings. type. That doesn't make it good that. or acceptable I, to exist. I'm the, first, the best thing they've ever done was the first movie. The first movie was okay. <laughs> Well, that's right. <laughs> and it's, no, I you have to be if you want to do over two time zones, two time points. You have to be very careful. They did not do a good job of it. Also, it doesn't make any sense in the in the future time point. You've got Umbrella still doing experiments when there's what a, ha- a, a handful of million people left. Yet they still act like they're a global corporation with those people to sell, like the stuff to sell to. It's like it, it doesn't make any sense. You put. Two have have you on. have you have you played Village? Village. Is that the one with Lady Dimitrescu? Yeah. Umbrella's Umbrella's still around there, even though like the human populace is completely utterly decimated. It's the the, it's the same as the games. Yeah. (laughs) Because they're selling to the elites. Yeah. Seriously. Oh no 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 no! Umbrella's still around, but they're not like oh yes, we'll market this antidepressant to people. (laughs) No, but that's the past part you're talking about. Is that the past part? I can't remember. It's just, yeah. It's, it's just terrible, man. It all blurs together. Loz hates things. I hate things. Loz <laughs> hates things. I heard it was all right. 
I enjoy that. And that's well, about all I know. <laughs> well, better you'll never than get the, any more uh, of it. Horrifically uh, photoshopped, airbrushed, uh, Melina Jovovich. <laughs> Which one was it? Was it Extinction? And it's just like, this yeah. is so smooth. Like, her face is just so smooth. For some reason. <laughs> Uh, so, finally, did you know that before the infamous Deke dub of Sailor Moon, with its massive liberties uh, taken in both the script and uh, the editing, there were plans for an adaptation that was half live action and half American animation? The, what the um, fuck? Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the pilot episode somehow found its way into the Library, library of Congress, where a lost media YouTuber found it, uh, bringing us to where we are now. Based on its quality, it's no wonder they scrapped the idea and went with the dub instead. Did you? I posted this in Discord for for you two to look at. Did you? Did you peek at it? No, I I I've seen loads of memes on the internet of like the, the transformation sequence, and I thought that was horrific <laughs> enough to to leave my curiosity there. Um, Oh yeah, it's it's oh man, it's the, the acting is bad. The right, I mean, I, I know it's just a pilot episode. It's sort of just a proof of concept, but their proof of concept is bad. <laughs> but it's part of a full documentary that they did on it, uh, on like the the, um, uh, the the YouTuber did on like how they made the episode, how they decided to scrap it and go with the dub instead. Uh, so you can watch the full documentary or just the episode. And if you love bad things like I love bad things, I highly suggest watch the episode. I so. <gasps> oh. Right. So let's let's um, bridge our way into the main topic of the episode. But before we do that, uh, just gonna get like you know Sliv to talk about himself a little bit. Um, you know where where can people find you and uh, what got you into anime? Um, hi, I'm Sliv. Um, I'm usually, if I'm on anything, I'm on Twitch, but I'm either there or on my Twitter. I'm just working a lot right now, so I'm kind of in between stuff, but I usually do Warframe related content, play a lot of Warframe, or Final Fantasy XIV. Um, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Getting into anime, what did get me? You know, it was probably when I was in like middle school ish, and I had heard about Dragon Ball, so I started watching Dragon Ball whenever I could catch an episode and also Sailor Moon was in the time slot before it so I'd always watch both one yeah. of them I yeah. would admit to be more than the other but <laughs> for me, for me I, I think for me it was Sailor Moon and Voltron but same same thing yep similar similar era around there and so it was like that and then I think I also saw like Elvin Lead around that time um, and also the Miyazaki films definitely got me into anime as well mm-hmm. on, on a slightly similar tangent what's your favorite anime like, what's the, what's the one anime you can watch again and again and again and not get bored of it? Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Fair. It is my favorite anime for many reasons, yes. <laughs> That's entirely fair. Yeah, it's. I just love the episodic nature feel of it. It almost feels like a television show in that way, and the way they, like, bridged that. And then the characters are just so good, but I'll get into one of those later. Yep. Cool, right. So, uh, yeah, when I reached out to you, I gave you a list of topics, suggestions, and the one that we landed on was, you know, uh, what makes a good antagonist and protagonist. So, yeah, I don't know who wants to start this off, but, you know, uh, who who wants to nominate themselves? Okay, I want to nominate myself for fixing this real quick. Yeah, you always need to fix things real quick. Yep. Cool. Well, actually, to be fair, considering it's on screen right now, I'm going to go with Kill the Kill. So Mm. I always found that there's a lot of similarities between Kill the Kill and Gurren Lagann, not only in artistic style, but in story narrative. But one of the nice things I liked about Kill the Kill is that the main protagonists, you know, they're, they're female when it comes to the the hero tropes and things. What, what are you going to say, Loz? Well, we're, we're talking about the antagonists and protagonists. You should name them. Because was, we're not talking about the show here. We're talking I, about I, I, True, true. But I, like, I can't remember what uh, the it's antagonists Ryu, are. But Ryu, I was mostly, Ryuko for the... Ryuko's, 
yeah protagonist i can't remember who the antagonist is, but it's mostly brioko that i wanted to talk about that's you know, the reason why i wanted to do that is because i was going to say well who is the antagonist of killer Kill? spoilers potential well i'm not gonna i'm you know I'm just wait are we talking about the are we talking about the one that the actual the actual antagonist or or mm, mm. so which which antagonist I'm singing, are you I'm thinking with <laughs> Do you want to steal this uh, thunder laws, or am I going to say my piece first? No, I'm just going to beat you into submission so you do it right. Okay, so <laughs> the thing that I really like about Ryoko is the fact that what she's going through and what she's trying to accomplish, right? She's not just a one-trick side character that a lot of female characters often tend to be when it comes to these sorts of shows. Even characters like this is where Loz is going to constantly ping me until I actually... Well, I'll just give you the names as you go. Oh, okay, yeah, we are I'll back you. That's fine. Okay, so he's, he's being nice to me. Right, but the, the point is that... Yeah, I just... I think that she's extremely well written. You get so many other characters that are out there that are, you know, good female cast, but they are so much of a supporting character and they don't give a look in to be anything beyond that. Heck... Nezuko from Demon Slayer. She's an extremely well powerful character, yet all she is is effectively the... The trump um, card. No, no, no. Not even the trump card. She is the... the, the, the oh God. The girlfriend in the fridge slash... Ah. Um, what's it called? Princess in another castle, right? She's, you know, she's treated as a reason to do anything, not anyone that can do something for themselves. Right. If, and if she was trapped inside the box the whole time, I would agree with you. But she has her own agency. She has her own actions, just limitations put upon them. I do agree with you that at the start, she is just used as the main driving force for the protagonist to move forward. But then Have you seen the second become, season? I haven't seen the second season, but I don't need to. Because like I can say in the first season, she at least has her own age. She does her own things and has her own effects. She's more than just a plot point in a box. I will say by the second season that's kind of undone and she's just basically back to a plot point in the box. Well, that, that's fine that it could change, but at least there's a window in which she is not. Okay, fine. But yeah, so that's that's why I very much in uh, what's got like Ryoko in... Um, Her motivations make I sense. Like uh, they're... They're, um, they, um, they're noble, like a, like a protagonist should be. They're not um, just talking I'm, about boys. Yeah. No, I, I kind of like how... The, it's a good example, because she's very headstrong, almost to the point of brash, and she's kind of charging into this school, the, the main point of it, without really a plan or anything, but you just know from her character that that's exactly what... You know, she's being true to herself, and it's like, that's what she'd do. She's not going to sit back and think or infiltrate the school in some sneaky way. It's like, you want a protagonist that just, you know, drives home, this is what I'm going to do. Let's get she's it she's, just... she's um, commoner, but, but female. That's, that's a mean no, I, I think I think she's more than just Kamina. Yeah, okay. No, I, I think she's more than Kamina in some ways because I think she's more confident in herself than Kamina. Well, is. Kamina what, what is... relies on other people a lot to, to move forward. Mm. That's the thing. Without um, uh, Simon. Gonna, yeah, I was going to ask you to say it. Not not because I didn't know, but because I didn't want to get the pronunciation wrong because you'd, you'd be annoyed. Uh, Shimon. Without mm. him, he wouldn't, Shut up, he wouldn't have the draw. No, 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 I didn't want to annoy you. Because I know it's. No, he just did it. Okay. Shimon. Back. It's the right. That's, that's the proper. No, Come it's, on. What? No, no, it's no, fucking no. not. It's Shimon. Oh, I'm going to hit you. Uh, but whereas. Um, uh, oh, no, I've forgotten the name. Kaz Ka Kamina. No, Ryoko. Ryoko? Ryoko? Ryoko. You know, she 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 achieves. She gets to the school and everything by herself. You know, she discovers all of that. Obviously, later she gets some great moral support, as we have on screen there. But uh, no, I just like you know to start with, she is just driven. Well, very good. what I what I what I kind of meant by that comparison is that she's still she's got those very those shonen tropes that you usually see only in boys. It, it is it is a shonen anime. She's got that headstrong nature that that I'm gonna do this because I you know just have the force yeah, of will to do it. To. Yeah, yeah. I think they've proved that this doesn't have to be just a boy thing for Shonen Anime. Exactly. Like, yeah. I think I just said it. But instead of being like, ah, she's copied the boys, it's like, no, this is a Shonen Anime that maintains its protagonist being incredibly strong and driven. Yeah. Yeah. Sliv, because we are going a mile a minute, 
and we're talking <laughs> over each other faster than <laughs> anyone could count. Do you have anything to say about Killer Kill? Not particularly, to be honest. <laughs> okay. I think I watched like a couple episodes. I haven't finished it. So, mm. <laughs> see, I did that. I no. did that, and then I came back years later, and I walked, like I I couldn't stop watching it. It's on my list, definitely, to like catch up on. I have a very long list of anime that I need to catch back yeah. up on, but and not rewatching Cowboy Bebop for like the third, three hundredth time. But it's fine. <laughs> Fair. Well, should we segue into Cowboy Bebop then? Yeah, we yeah. can get into Bebop. Sure. Um, I brought up Spike as protagonists for characters I really like. Um, the whole like world of Bebop resonates with me i like that it's in kind of like a near future where it's essentially just people interacting with the world as um as like ex-criminals or like people who've been thrown under the bus by uh police and other forces or like for Faye, she's like trying to escape debt and all these other things so it's like it's people with very relatable situations it like put into space and then just the way they interact with everything and spike is a good character to me in this sort of environment, not just because he's very cool, he's very collected, he's very smart, he's a little bit um, arrogant sometimes, and that sometimes gets him in trouble, and that kind of plays into the whole like, old kind of like old TV style of like episodic stuff where they get into hijinks and then somehow find their way out of it. But the, the whole overarching narrative of him with his past and Vicious and the Syndicate and all that is extremely well tied in and resolves very well. And I think Vicious is a great foil to him as well as a character. Um, but yeah, I really like Spike as a main character. Would you would you say that he's um, a flawed protagonist, but, but those flaws help make him better? Absolutely. Like he's not, yeah. there's in no way that he's perfect. Like he is the character that we follow, but he's, there's many things that he does that's like morally questionable. I mean, he's a bounty hunter. That's like the yeah. setup. So it's like, that's already kind of like a gray area. But the situation, like learning about him, his past, and then learning about the people that he associates with and their pasts, it it all makes sense by the end. You're like, I can understand. Like, I understand why they took this route. Yeah. So, yeah. Out of interest, did you actually see the oh God, Cowboy oh Bebop God. movie? Uh, oh, no, the movie. The movie I haven't seen. I've been, I keep forgetting that it's a thing for some reason, and I need to watch it. I did watch it, the live action. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, I will say, I think the casting was good, and I think the environmental design was good. I think, for some reason, they took too positive of a take on the environment of Bebop when it's a very, like, it's not a, not like grim dark, but it's it's not a very happy place. And for some reason, the, the tone just felt very off, especially by the end. And there's mm -hmm. some character twists towards the end where I was just like, I don't this didn't need to happen. Also, I don't need to know everything about Vicious. I liked him when he was a shark. Um, something that you knew was there, but you couldn't see. See glimpses mm -hmm. of him and things he did, and that was all you needed to know. You knew he was a bad person. <laughs> that was it. So, that's, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's the live action. Lowe's, do you have any comments? Live action is finally dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, more more about Spike and less about the live action laws. <laughs> He's got great it's hair. Been, it's been half a minute. A long hair. time before I, I meant to rewatch it before watching the live action. But then after the um, I was like so hyped for the live action, and we knew it was like looking bad. I'm like okay, and I never got around to rewatching it recently. It's been <laughs> a long time since I've seen Cowboy Bebop. I really should probably rewatch it. So it's not. I don't really want to comment on it too much. So I'll leave mm. to you guys then. Yeah. I feel that Spike is a great character and. He is as like to be honest, he is more of like a, a piece of the greater whole because he he is a part of Bebop as much as Faye, Jet, uh, and Edward. But I kind of feel when the team fell apart, so did he as a character because it, it felt like he uh, he was missing a piece of himself, kind of thing. And maybe that was supposed to be the underlying metaphor: the fact that because the team fell apart. You know, it's kind of a tragedy. Had, uh, yeah, we like had a, like the, in end the classical of the show sense. Yeah, yeah, 
Uh, the I, I do love him as a character. I love the hijinks that they get up to, like the the commentary between Spike and Jet with about bell peppers and beef. It's like <laughs> you can't call it bell peppers and beef if there's no beef. 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 <laughs> you know, it's like well, maybe if you catch big game, we could get some beef. <laughs> Oh god, yeah. in the whole episode with the thing that lived in the fridge. In the fridge? Yeah. Yes. Oh. yeah. It tells me anything. I need to check the fridge. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I, that's such a good... Uh, also, uh, side note as well, his voice actor is... Oh from, god. The Steve English Blum. the English VA yeah. cast. Steve Blum. It just, the whole cast is incredible. Yeah, um, they read it really well. Yeah, so good. Um, <laughs> side, side, a little small side note uh, to, to that. Did you know that the same company... Uh, that did the casting and, and work for that one. Also did an, uh, a redub of Akira. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah, actually really that. good. Huh. I mean, I, I, the, the original dub has a special place in my heart, but the, the, mm. the, the other one is, is obviously better. You, you're talking about the the second dub that was done in, like, yes, the late 90s. In like, yeah, 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 yeah. Same, yeah. same group that did this and Trigun. Which had Johnny Young Bosch as... Um, Canada. Yes. So. Hmm. Cool. Right. Uh, who wants to go next? I would actually like to talk about an antagonist, and uh, okay. I would I would like to talk about uh, the idea of a an object or a place being an antagonist. Okay. Um, I think that the abyss itself in Made in Abyss is is the major antagonist to the show. Yes, you so, yes you do have minor ones in each arc, but but the abyss itself is is the overarching force that pushes against our heroes. I just want to check with Sliv. Have you seen Made in Abyss? I have not. Okay, oh. so Nazareth, give give a you, bit of a yeah. I can use some setup for me. Do not see. Do you see this? Do you see this background <laughs> here? See, look at this. What so yeah, describe yeah. what the, describe the. The, the the images we're seeing. What would you just? What the anime does it make you think this anime is like? What do you think? Um, I mean, I, mean, that, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. I mean, I did watch. Um, what was the? Uh, the school children. Uh, where they're getting sell, sold. What is that? Um, oh, I think it's uh, nice. Promise yeah. Neverland. Promise Neverland. Yeah, I did watch that, and that was the, my first like impression from that pe previous photo. So. Mm. <laughs> ah. I, I will I will I will tell you right made in abyss is so much worse you you, you flip, I don't know about so, so, much, so, much, worse. so much worse it's yeah. so much worse yeah okay yeah so uh, made in abyss is so much more <laughs> grim uh, than promise never so it, it starts out very nice and you know kind of kind of gentle and eases you into this world by introducing you to our characters in an orphanage uh, and it also introduces you to the idea of the abyss, which is just this this massive, mysterious hole in the ground that goes, I mean, just miles down. And uh, the thing is that once you enter it, you 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 receive the curse of the abyss, and coming back out of it will do things to you. So essentially, if you go down far enough, you won't. You're not coming back. Um, and the, the upper layers are kind of nice. You know, it's all grassy and bright and sunny. And then the, the further down you go, the, the more monsters and horrible things you encounter uh, to the point that you're starting by the by the, the by the movie, uh, the third movie, Dawn of the Deep Soul. Um, they are like emotionally traumatizing our characters just hmm. and, and physically. Um, yep. I'm getting Dante's Inferno vibes, both like layers. Yeah, of kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Although I, ha oh gosh, I had another uh, idea recently, and now I can't remember what it was. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've likened it to like purgatory or something. And if they can get through these trials, then they'll get to you know, uh, uh, uh paradise or whatever. But yeah, it's oh my gosh. But but the abyss itself is work. Like again, although you do have an antagonist in Dawn of the Deep Soul who is doing horrible things to them, it's because of the abyss, because of his obsession with the abyss, because he you and know because of what the abyss has made him into. Yes, and because of what the abyss has made him into. Yeah. So I I I think that you can have. Well, I mean, what do you do? You think you can have something that is an antagonist? That is the world itself, or you know, just something that's not a person. Until I'd seen Made in Abyss, I would say no. But <laughs> Made in Abyss pretty much 
freaking nails that coffin. You know, just nails. <laughs> you know, it's just freaking. No, oh, made the best. Yeah, fuck. The abyss oh, is the antagonist. So well, I'm curious. Now I might have to check it out. <laughs> oh, don't. Do it. Just, just, <laughs> just, 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 just. If you enjoy if, happiness, if, don't. Yeah. Don't enjoy. I don't know. What? what I mean, it's, it, it, it is amazing, <laughs> but it is amazing in the way that, like, like it hurts you deep inside. Right. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and horrible at the same time. Now, mm -hmm. it's not, the sentence will sound wrong, but seriously, it's not. The, the immediate response you'll get to this sentence is like, oh, that, oh, that sounds, yeah, but it's actually, no, you have no idea. It's not what you think it is, but it's still worse. Uh, the things this show does to children is horrific. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Not in the way that your mind instantly goes to. No, it does different, terrible things to them. Very traumatizing. Oh, yeah. em emotional so damage. Stuff. Super, yeah. super emotional okay. damage. Emotional? What are you talking about, Nazareth? <laughs> oh, and physical damage. Na Nazareth, I mean, yeah. Nazareth, Nazareth, yeah. cartridges. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cartridges, Nazareth. Yeah. Cartridges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. So no, as a, but as an antagonist, so this the 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 abyss itself. So it's a giant pit, and it's really cool because it is, it's almost this sort of adventure you seem to want to go on. You got the people who live at the top, and it's like oh the pit, oh it's exciting. And at the start, they there's magical down. things. Down. We can find it's, we can find amazing artifacts down there and become famous. Yeah, mm. yeah it's seen there's it's heroic when uh you know if people do the the famous there's people who get they get whistles and they get better whistles so the deeper they go basically as a as like a reward. Mm up until what's called a white whistle which is the highest level whistle and if if a white whistle dies and their their whistle comes up it's almost a celebration because of all the stuff that person's done to help the just you know look through the abyss and the, they you know they've gotten so far like a celebrity so it, it's this it almost put like a heroic at first when you're at the top uh, as they go deeper and deep oh, why are these children going deep and like they could just wait a few years no we're going now and it's just oh dear lord why just mm. just oh, you know how headstrong if, them kids are if I wasn't watching this show, I don't even. So, so I was the thing I was mentioning about, oh, yeah, cartridges, which I'm not explaining what a cartridge is. It's terrific. Uh, is is like I think it's from the movie, but we're on the second season now, and what this this the the, the abyss itself definitely is a definitely proves itself to be an antagonist in the second season because it's just oh yeah so mysterious and has trips and tribulations everywhere. It it almost does feel like it is working against. The people inside of it trying to stop them at every turn it's not like oh it's like it's not it's not sentient or anything like a wall doesn't is not alive and like traps them or something but you know the things living inside of it and the the restrictions the it curse itself it, yeah it, yeah it becomes yeah. this almost like shadowy person in a cape over their shoulder the whole time it's 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 good it's never they're never far from it it's always there with you you, you sometimes get these the it's like it's like death nice. looming just behind you yes yeah, 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 but at the same time, you can feel like, oh, it's fine, everything's fine, because you got these lovely vistas in the show, which you show these beautiful fancy. Well, there's, there's, there's nice yeah. moments like when they, even in the second season, when they finally found, a, you know, like they found a really good food source, and they all had had a really nice time eating it, and and then the next day they found out that parts of like their hair and nails, nail clippings and stuff had been stolen. It, hmm. You know, you know, it goes from Just nice so. to creepy, like in, a, in <laughs> zero to creepy, oh, and. Yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, he's not. He's, he's. He's not. He's just doing some random thing there because it has nothing on what recently the show. The last two oh yeah. No, I'm trying not to spoil things I'm not, too I'm not much. Yeah. It because it's just horrific. It's just, yeah. Oh, just on emotional level and a physical level. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so yes, the antagonist. But would you say? I would say though, conversely, because this antagonist is so powerful in the show, our protagonist in the show, they are serviceable but very weak because of it. Because they're almost mm. lost. You know, you can't really. Their, their characters are just like. They're ambitious and adventurous and gung ho and things, and I can't really describe much to them because they're completely overshadowed by the environment, which is their antagonist. Yeah, that's fa yeah. I I think in Dawn of the Deep Soul, you might have got a, a slightly better grasp on them, uh, but yeah, to a large extent, they seem to be at the mercy of what's going on around them, and they're just struggling to survive. I think that's yeah, cool, cool. Laws. What? what would any who who would you like? Does to any of this strike you fancy? Protagonist. We, 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 any Gundam or just Gundam? Basic Gundam. 
basic Gundam. We're gonna get you basic Gundam. Okay. Or talk if about... you've got it, the Origin. It would probably have it. Yeah. <laughs> we get so much Gundam Char, because it's just Char. Nah. He's just. Well, the he's best he's the hero, right? He is. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. So that, that's good. partly why I was gonna pick it. So when, when we get some Gundam in the background there. Oh, by the way. Oh, there we go. We go. Oh, this. I don't want to swear. These people. <laughs> these Google friendly Bundred. people here. They're so friendly. These people. Look, so Bundred, friendly. Bundred just wants to help. Um, just by doing science. An adventure in the abyss, doesn't he? Yeah. Where's my Gundam? I'm freaking fine here, okay? Do you know how many Gundam shows we have in here? <laughs> not enough. Not I'm enough. sorry, I am not- I cannot spot out of all of the Gundam stuff here, which Gundam is which, apart from Exia. That's the only- that's- 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 what the, <laughs> anyway. but, so have you watched any Gundam? A little bit. I'm not deep into it, like I know I'm guessing Wing. most fans are. Yeah, Wing. Um... Right. But so, so basically, right? You, do you remember who Zex is? Yes. Yes. Right. Zex is just the char copy into Wing, so he's he's very mm. similar to the character, and in very very similar actually. So you just copy paste him. But Char was the original, and but the sad thing is that obviously Wing's just been one series, one movie, whereas uh, we've had we get to see Char from different angles at different points. So as a character, he's just gets a lot more time. But yeah, Zex is very similar uh, for anyone who's not who's seen like Gunwing. I know because Gunwing was the first show to, that was really brought to the West. So mm -hmm. I know a lot more people are familiar with that. But anyway, why Char? And it, and it aired on Cartoon Network. So I mean, that, that all sounds. Yes. Yeah, Gunwing was my first one as well. Uh, but so Char as an Ab I can never say his as name. As an Abel. As an Abel. Anyway, as an he Abel. is an amazing antagonist, really. The, the main character, Amaro, who we're up against, is just your self-insert character, really. Amro <laughs> is just representative of a young boy getting thrown into a war and things, and I'm going to have to show you him getting slapped at some point, because that's important to see. But his antagonist is really what drives him forward. So you've got this character, and ah, who cares, it's really old anime. So he's obviously pretending... He's got a long backstory of who he actually is, which Gundam The Origin, which if anyone hasn't watched it, you probably should just watch it, because it's just, it's just... You don't even know we need to watch Gundam or anything. It's a good starting point get on that you realize you get told in fact in this char is the protagonist but really you know he, he, in fact that's probably one of the best reasons why he's an antagonist is that he's of his own story he's a good protagonist as well that's probably what drives him forward but just the sense of class that he brings to any occasion and any fight any scene he's in is just just so good you know he, he dominates every room that he comes into with his commanding presence but also being you know a key in uh, key, yeah, key intellect while also being an excellent mobile suit pilot. Yes, just like Zex. It, it's, yeah. So he, he was also a great foil for the opponent, which is obviously Amaro Ray, which is your, he's a small boy. But they, they grow together as, you know, as opponents, which is good. So you want your, your antagonist to push your protagonist in a very good way without being rude. He's also, you know, he's got a sense of class to him. He's so, so kind of privileged based on who he was. That's why, yeah. Would you would you say that what makes a an, an antagonist based on this uh, part of what would make a great antagonist is somebody who believes what they're doing is the right thing? Well, I think they have I, they I, have I, like a strict code of, of of even if even if we don't agree with it, they have a strict code of ethics and honor. Can you name an antagonist which doesn't believe in what they're doing? I I mean there are, the there Joker? are definitely some that are just out there with twiddling. Uh, like mustache twirling villains who are like, ah, I'm evil. I just want to be evil. Uh, but then there are there are ones that actually think that they're doing the right thing. That they're the they're the good guy. I think even the people going, I'm evil and I will do evil things, <laughs> believe they are doing it, the right thing for their own right. Yeah, right. no. Even like, like even like Skeletor believed he was doing the right. <laughs> thing. But like, but like they they think they're doing it for the greater good, not just their own good. Mm. Like they think they're actually the good guy who is, who's who's helping Again, people. I think Skeletor thought he was doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, good. he just thought he'd be the best in charge. No, Loz, Loz is correct here. Skeletor did think that. But like one character, I would easily say that is a villain that you know flips on a dime. You've got your chaotic evil character. You've got the Joker, right? The Joker will happily flip on a dime in a heartbeat like first off everyone's got to kill batman no one's got to kill batman i want to unmask batman no one should unmask batman in fact everyone should just die like no one should die everyone should fight each other you know he he is a chaotic character and you often i feel as you know 
whenever someone's trying to write a narrative, they don't want someone that would just throw spanners at their own spanners. Like, you, you want someone that would actually have a sensible path of um, thought. So characters like uh, Char make sense in them being the protagonist of their own stories. Why would you throw spanners at spanners? That's the point of chaotic evil! Wouldn't throw spanners at spanners? Just to see what happens. Oh my god. <laughs> spanners at spanners. Spanners are useful. Though. Yeah, what but... happens if we each other? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on, over the uh, course of the series with Char, between the main series, then it goes into Zeta, he becomes... He actually becomes a good guy. Completely, he actually he, he wears a pair of black sunglasses, and nobody knows who he is. Does oh, he renounce Zeon? Oh, no, he got. He, I think he, they call him Quattro instead. And he's like, oh yeah. And then basically, <laughs> there's a different protagonist in Zeta. But then Amaro right turns up later. He's like, oh yeah, my job. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. How, could, obviously... how could how could he turn his back on the glorious principality of Zeon? Ah, well, it becomes Neo Zeon by then. Neo oh, Zeon. okay. Well, if they've forgotten their, their uh, you know, what they're supposed to be and, doing, then. And also, then you get, uh, it's, it's oh god, it just goes, it's, it's crazy. So you get like it splits between the Earth Alliance and things, and all this other <laughs> stuff. So he's like, you know, trying to attack the the true evil, and in the end, he just decides. And this is ah yeah, and then if you've got a real antagonist, they have to come up with a big plan at the end. And his idea is to drop a giant rock on Earth. That's his <laughs> plan. <laughs> You have to make you guys watch the movie at some point. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I'll pick Char as the bell. As the bell. I, as the bell. The problem I have with Char is uh -huh. very much a case of Game of Thrones situation. He is an amazing character, lost in a sea of mid characters. Like there are so uh, many characters. Do, do you know what I mean? Uh, I, uh no, because um, so you, I think you, if you saw, it's tricky to say because I wish they would just remake the original series. <laughs> the stuff with him and the Zabis does carry on, and that they're like excellent foils for him, while also being antagonists that he has to kind of work through, but also antagonists to the main protagonist, you know. So it, uh, maybe maybe on the good guy side, bloody kid. Yeah, it, it, it just feels that like a lot of the time when it comes to Gundam, there are just so many characters to just keep track of. And grant it in the origins, not Gundam origins, but Gundam the origin. Uh, the There were a lot of characters still, even on uh, Zeon's side. We didn't get to see a lot of the Federation's characters. But still, it just felt like there was so many characters. I'm like, no, just, just fuck off. Just show me Char. Just give me Char. I don't give a fuck about you. Just give me Char. Yeah, Char's better than you. Just give me Char. Fuck off. You know. Um, Stop showing me Beast Man. I want to see Skeletor. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Cool. So I am going to pick Ranking of Kings. So I'm going to talk about Boji who I think is a phenomenal protagonist. Uh, this is a series that spanned two seasons and it was fall 20, or oh, sorry, autumn uh, 2021, uh, spanned into winter 2022. And it's just incredible. So we, we have uh, a child who is half giant who is smaller than a regular human because <laughs> of a deal that his father made with a devil. So his father gained all of his firstborn son's strengths. And so, you know, Boji was left completely weak. He's Liquid Snake. And, uh, no, and worse. His, and his father is Solid Snake. No, no, no wor worse than that because Boji is both deaf and mute. Right, so he can't communicate with anyone uh, who doesn't know sign language, and this is in a fantasy setting um, where pretty much sign language is just non-existent. You know, in in a setting where most people are illiterate, you know, people definitely don't know sign language, and the only person that he gets to communicate with is his uh, stepmother, right? Who 
initially comes across as like you know the evil stepmother who wants to lock him in the no, tower. Not, not yeah. quite that badly evil. She's like the overbearing, Fair. strict grandma. Um, yes. Mother, Have you watched this? this? Not, I most of it. I still oh. need to watch it. Yeah. Oh, it, uh, it, 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 uh, the, I, I think I, I did get. I think I reached saturation, so I had to put it down. But I yeah. literally, when I started watching it, get like two episodes in, and you just won't put it down until like twelve episodes. You'll just watch twelve episodes in a few seconds. It's it, yeah. Just, <laughs> this, this kid has obviously he's like so obviously the deal his, his dad made. He's literally the remnant. You know, almost like you know the the he should he should be a god basically a giant with huge strength and everything, and he's just. All of that essence taken out from him, and he's just the, the bare minimum. Oh, so he's so Solidus. Not he, he's not even Solid Snake. He's Solidus. I'm making Metal Gear Solid reference. Yeah, <laughs> like these. <laughs> but, but he these references don't match. The biggest part. <laughs> yeah, world. he really yeah. does. It's like you know, this is a kid who just just brushes off everything, doesn't care. He just wants to, you know, he's just such a nice, a pure and perfect soul almost. But you know, at the same time, he just can't he can't communicate with anyone. Uh, who are you going to say you could talk to? So you could say his mum or his is sorry, this, and uh, the assassin. And the only other one I can think of is his teacher. Is there someone and, else I'm missing? Yeah, it's Snake. Nick. Oh yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, the the snake. Um, Oh god, the snake disappears in uh, for the majority of the last half of the series. So yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. Loz, Loz, Loz is perfectly correct. I yeah, this so is, this is why we're making Metal Gear Solid references. Yeah, see, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, no, it's it's a fantastic series. Like the, the you know, and Boji, you, you are always rooting for him, right? You are always feeling what he's going through he is always the bigger character he is always trying to fight against the odds he's he's put through the thick of it uh you know he's betrayed left right and center it's it's he's just such a phenomenal character to go through literal hell only to at the end of it you know still be the better man and you know go above and beyond to help everyone he he I, I i love him he's a brilliant character everyone wants him to to be happy everyone everyone ends up even the villains end up rooting for him yep wow right? so it's it it really shows like to his character like how phenomenal he is oh so oh yeah. Every, everyone should check out ranking of kings if they haven't any questions before we move on? No. No. Okay. So nope. we're gonna pass it back to Sliv. Uh, what do you, who, who slash what? <laughs> anyone? Um, I'm gonna hop over to antagonist because I brought this one in. Okay. Uh, speaking of not enjoying happiness, uh, Griffith from Berserk. Ah uh -huh, You want to <laughs> chose Berserk? <laughs> okay. Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. Um. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know why you picked him though. Griffith did nothing wrong. Uh, <laughs> Griffith's <laughs> response to his environment, which was similar to Guts's, was so counter that mm. one, he's a great foil to Guts in that way. But two, the the extreme the extremity to which he takes his response to these things is uh, a little, little over the top. Stunning. Just a, uh, yeah, he flight over reaction. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I've I've not actually seen Berserk. These two have constantly said I need to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so feel free to set up an example of you know where Guts and Griffith will approach uh, the same situation differently. Um, I guess to thinking like just like in general, in response to the idea of like determining their own fate and like their own paths in life. Uh, Guts is a lot more he's he's going to do what he wants to do to make his life better and then Griffith takes a lot of situations that happen in his life and then in response with a few other things turns into basically like the most evil person possible um, mm. he comes think... he's, he's a very like attractive person he's a very well liked person and then he ends up using everyone and everything that has ever brought him to the point that he is as tools to become what he wants to be. 
essentially. So does he want to be an antagonist? Does he want to be a villain? It's it's mm. another case of he thinks he's doing the right thing for the world because yes. the world is a horrible, corrupt, dirty, awful place. So he thinks he's the hero of his own story. Yes. Yes. And he I, I think so. I think there's I think you could say that guts is guts is a force for independent behavior. Even though yes. he works with the team, he it's you know it's it's he's doing it for him. Mm -hmm. He's de he's determining his own fate, and yep. Griffith wants to determine everyone else's fate. So he's sort of the collectivist with him in charge. Yeah, right. So where guts will mind his own, Griffith is basically dictating the situation. Yes, mm -hmm. Griffith yeah. wants to be the leader the yes. leader of everything and control Forever. like yeah and con <laughs> yeah. and control how people do things what they do you know just everything every aspect of everything so he wants to be PewDiePie sorry, <laughs> <laughs> he to be um, sorry. yeah he very much does want like he wants to be the center of all of this he also thinks he is but the best at it. but he's convinced himself that he doesn't want power for himself he wants power to help the world yeah it's so uh yeah oh, i'm not him. getting into, not getting into spoilers but the the things that he does to attain his goals are very very dark and very very twisted mm -hmm. um he goes very much from like being like a little bit of an arrogant character but like understandable like you can you can understand who griffith is and then his turn due to some things that happen later is basically just like shreds his humanity and he just yeah <laughs> he's he's, it's, he's it's, amazing as an antagonist. Yeah, but but I think part of what makes it so good is that there is a good chunk of the show where he's almost a secondary protagonist. You know, he's he's he yes. and guts are almost in step and in, in you know in motion doing things together, and mm -hmm. and and then the twist happens. So you you've got this nice setup of almost a peaceful world, and mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh yeah so. <laughs> So I always think it's interesting that in Western stuff, when you have, maybe this is a bit of an oversimplification. I'm, I'm mostly looking at Marvel stuff, but mm. when in Marvel, there is typically one turning point in a character's life, whether mm. or not they turn into a superhero or a supervillain. And a lot of the time that turning point can be seen um in a lot of different characters so for example peter parker um you know losing his uncle whereas uh harry osborn uh, loses his father one becomes a superhero one becomes a supervillain right and mm -hmm. um i feel that it's a bit of a weak way of doing it in terms of the west but my question to you was uh, Griffith's turning point was that due to him effectively breaking or was it seizing of an opportunity hmm I, a little bit of it's definitely things piling up right yeah. it's it's um little things that slowly pile up more and more and more until he does kind of snap but but when he does mm. snap he doesn't really like I don't know it's weird he doesn't he doesn't <laughs> show it the way other people might like yeah it kind of hidden there is a bit of an external force as well um but that doesn't come up so much at, right there but yeah there's it's a lot of his reaction and i think it's good too because he's he's this type of character which i like as antagonist as well which are like the beautiful character um that everyone likes and everyone respects and then like they don't always exactly get what they want and often like the the protagonist is kind of like their so the person that like pushes against them in some ways um and then like over time this builds up and builds up and builds up and then eventually the the turn makes sense and it's not like it's not just like a full like i'm evil now it's like you no know, he's he's himself he's just not good <laughs> yeah <laughs> things have changed but it's um, through yeah. his own actions that yeah took him there yeah. Yeah, his own yes. hubris. My hubris. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 And it's the consequence mm. of his own actions that pushes him to go there, to this dark place. And mm. then he then, in that state, makes choices. Yes. He does make choices. Yeah. He does, make choices. He does still <laughs> have his own agency the whole way through. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. But yeah, I, I like him when I was re- when I was watching um not a full like comparison obviously, but when I was watching uh Devil Man Cry Baby, uh Rio's character. In some ways, in that kind of like pristine, like this guy seems really like like a good guy, and then he just does something totally sociopathic. You're like, oh, that's something is wrong. Um but obviously that one was in like in a much more exaggerated way in many ways. This is a much more uh gradual build and turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It all feels gonna... very natural. Yeah. I say Nazareth, where where do you want to take this next? Oh gosh. Uh <laughs> let's Let's oh, let's talk about Steins Gate. Let's talk about Steins let's. Gate. Okay. Oh, so you so you've seen Steins Gate? Yes. <laughs> they they okay. just made me. Uh, I haven't I haven't quite finished it yet. Uh, oh no, we did. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, no, no. There's a, there's yeah, but but even so, even so, I think the I think. <laughs> Uh, yes, <laughs> even even so, I think I've seen enough to say that that this show has an amazing protagonist. But he's not like, you know, he's not your typical good guy. He's he's I mean he's a mad scientist. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Um, but yeah, so so like he doesn't he doesn't have your normal motivations, but he is still doing good things in the end, even if it's partially for selfish reasons. Like, he doesn't want to see X person disappear. And so, you know, he'll do anything to save that person. But in the course of that, he's going to end up helping the world, well, in theory, and by by stopping this omnipresent monolithic group that controls everything. So, to give a little more clarity for anyone who's not watched Steins Gate, mm. um... It is effectively time travel. So it's yeah. a, uh, it's a narrative about time travel, and it is done in a very interesting way, especially as it references a lot of early two thousands internet culture. It has a very interesting takes on time travel. It makes a lot of references some of which are translated from Japanese to English, some of them brand new for um, the dub. localization of the dub. You know, So it's a great series where effectively this self-proclaimed mad scientist inadvertently invents time travel and chaos ensues. So I think given that you can, unless Lars thinks I should explain more. No, no, that's fine. I'll come back. Okay, cool. And then as if you want to continue to talk about going Kilmer. <laughs> um, uh, geez, man, it may have been a bad pick. I don't have too much more to say about him other than he just, he just keeps moving. Like whatever happens, he ends up keep, you know, moving forward. Uh, he he does have points where he struggles with what's happening, because it seems like he he can't you know that he's doomed to fail, but but then you know something happens and he's able to to keep going and keep moving and um yeah he's what well, I really Nazareth poor Nazareth seems to do you, you want some out Nazareth yes please please no. yeah. okay. <laughs> so what makes this guy such a great protagonist in my mind is that he. He is not a perfect individual in any way to perform. He is flawed. He is heavily flawed. He has terrible communication skills with people. This is a guy who will talk to his phone to nobody <laughs> rather than deal with the situation around him. But over time, through his own actions, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he's a genius or an idiot. You don't really know because, you know, that's, that's the great thing about him. 
obviously people start coming around him. Now, as I say, this is a guy with no social skills who, who I think he even as a line, because obviously we started rewatching it in Nazareth recently, he says the, he builds a lab of, of people, which is just basically a large apartment room. And they start doing stuff with it. And he just did it. I don't I can't remember what he said the reason was. Is it was to bring people together or to work or something like that. But he then gets, people then start accumulating in the lab that he's created. Yeah. So you would think yeah. that he doesn't have the ability to care for people because he doesn't. He can't communicate with anyone in, <laughs> in the room at all. Like two two people around him, like two girls will start being, um, having a bit of a fight. And he'll just think, aha, I'll solve the situation. And he <laughs> just tries to with no social skills whatsoever. But yeah, he does it but pure, pure logic. <laughs> Despite the fact that he doesn't have the, the tools needed to really deal with the people around him, he still cares for everyone around him to the point, to, to, to a ridiculous degree, because he finally starts seeing... Literally trying to sacrifice lose, himself to, to he, yeah, so bring he them, just yeah. Anyone around him, and yeah. because it's the, you know, he's, now he's finally got all this stuff, and he just, you know, people in his circle and things, and it, it's just the the degree of... Oh, even even the latest one, where we, with the, um, the time-traveling girl, where, you know, he knew what the right thing was, and, and it killed him inside to let it happen. Yeah. Because he had to do it, yeah, 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 and you oh. know, he just it, you can see the 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 depths he will go to and to, to achieve protecting all the people around him is what makes him such a good protagonist. Because it, it, it I, I mean, I'm watching it so frustrated because I keep, I was even saying, it, I think we were watching yesterday, you know, why doesn't he just talk to people around him? It takes him a long time to do that, and it, but it's because it plays into his character. He's just, he just, he no, just I doesn't have those problem. skills. Yeah, yeah, he literally freezes up sometimes when he starts time jumping basically and tries to fix the problems that occur mm. you think he would just tell right everyone i'm time jumped and we're gonna do this <laughs> like if he's a prep person no he just runs off all the time they're like wait what's going <laughs> and yeah. nobody knows yeah. what he's doing he just seems to make him seem more crazy that's because he just doesn't have the capa capabilities to rationally talk to people it's only when he finally breaks down after trying possibly hundreds of times to save people but uh, he starts bringing in other people because he, as I said, he mm -hmm. just doesn't have the skills. But he just he's got like a he's got kind of got like a one track mind. Once he once he gets onto something, he just doesn't stop. Yeah, it's a I very think... like understandable character in that way. Where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's like a lot of people I think can relate to that. Where it's like, I have if you're like, I've got these plans, I've got these ways I like to organize things. These things like I've got a way to do this, but then like terrible. Terrible at communicating these things to people, <laughs> like, yeah. To a point that it's almost like destructive. And like he's doing his best, but yeah, he he struggles a lot <laughs> in that way. I think one of the most endearing parts to him is really early on in the story. You discover that well, that the, he is told that uh, one of the girls is his quote unquote hostage. Mm. and it doesn't really get explained until much later on in the series as to why she is his quote-unquote hostage she's not his hostage in the slightest it is just him awkwardly trying to show this person that he cares about them so much he doesn't want anything to happen to them and the fact that it takes so long and the way it explains this much better than I have it, it well you're trying not to give it so away in, you know yeah, yeah yeah it's so endearing to who he is as a character because it shows that he always had this capacity even though he's always sucked at it so and it, and yeah. it also you, you, you see the other character I mean obviously she's already learned how to how to deal with that part of him but you see the other characters uh, kind of learn to deal with that too, and, and understand his quirks. Uh, yeah, so good. It's so good, and he's amazing. He's just oh, I'm so <laughs> I'm so sad that we had to. I mean, this Japanese the, the the dub or the the sub is obviously better, but I can't believe we had to watch that one part in Japanese because they ruined it in English. <sighs> I oh, am yes. mad scientist. <laughs> yes, it's so yeah. cool. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's that's a great one. Oh. Right. Okay. Uh, unless we have anything else to say about Hyoin Kyoma, um, should we move on to Loz? Yes. What do you I'll want to... pick because I saw it on the list. I'm taking Tanya the Evil. 
Ah. Damn it! <laughs> uh, however, I find that Tanya is the best antagonist of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, from what I know about it, I haven't seen it either. Um, that sounds right. <laughs> yeah. So the world is the protagonist. Tanya is the antagonist of this. Show. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the opposite of Made in Abyss. Oh my god. Yes. So <laughs> the setup for this show is a guy who is a Japanese salary worker gets shoved. He cancels somebody's like loan, uh, loan or mortgage or something. And then the guy. Oh, gets I thought you fired he... someone. It was either that or fired them. I can't remember. And um, but it doesn't yeah. matter. He the guy shoves him off the train into a, just in front of off the platform into oh. a moving train. And in the moment when he's just about to die, time freezes. And in that time, God comes down, basically. Mm -hmm. The equivalent of God, an entity. And it starts talking through the, the all the voices being around him. And it's basically muttering along the lines of, God, why is it these people? God, they all suck. Oh, my God, this is just stupid. You know, so, so things like that. And he's like, wait a minute, are you God? And he starts talking to God. And God is just so, like, yeah, nobody believes in me and things anymore. He's like, of course I don't believe in you, you stupid thing. So... God takes him up as a challenge that I can put you in a world in which you will pray to me. I will make you pray to me. I'll make you, you know, as, as a test, like, oh, yeah, nobody seems to believe in God anymore. Maybe I can use this as a test to see if I can make people believe it. And he reincarnates this, this salary person, the salary worker, in a new world. And this world is a alternative World War I, uh, but with magic. Uh, so instead of like flying with biplanes a lot, we can, as you can see here, we can use a box and a special gear apparatus with certain people who have magical cap capabilities and they can then fly and shoot magic spells and things. But it's still World War One. I. I mean, one of these people isn't like a tactical nuke. They well, they are quite powerful, but they couldn't, they wouldn't win a war by themselves, kind of thing. So you've got trench warfare. You've got basically Europe fighting each other. You know, America's in there as well. It is. All but in name, alternative World War One, and he reincarn the, the God reincarnates our main character. Sorry, our main antagonist as a small girl. <laughs> and instead of going up to God's challenge or saying like, "Yep, I'll do all this stuff," decides I don't want to try and do any of that. I'm gonna try and find the most lazy, backward job that I can and just have a relaxing life uh, and and just live it out, and then I'll prove God wrong. And so enters the military with the goal of trying to become someone in the back line, training or administration or something, and then that way they can just live out the the, the First World War and it'll be fine. Just to add in, uh, she does this at the age of ten when it's discovered yeah. that she has an exceptionally high aptitude towards magic. I was, I was, yeah, I was about to say that. So yeah, so oh, okay. get into the military. They, everyone gets assessed for magic, and it turns out that, that God has at least given them one gift. They've given them a high aptitude of magic, and at the age of ten, while still being a small child, they decide they get entered into the military. <laughs> However, they are a 30, 40 year old man in a kid's body, and they are not nice. <laughs> they are the, the most evil. Obviously, with their skill and aptitude of magic, they they rise the ranks pretty quickly and get put in charge of training and everything. But they are not nice to the people around them. Such as like people who disobey them, they get put in a box, in a pillbox somewhere, which they know, which Tanya realizes is going to get shelled and then they get killed. Um, Tanya will abuse the troops to the point of breaking. Uh, at the same time though, so Tanya is just trying to be God and just try and get to a back row job. But because they're so good and they keep having amazing successes, they forever keep getting put on the front lines <laughs> and doing ridiculous special missions all by themselves. Uh, even no just... matter what they do, even when, even when they file, even when I think she finally gets assigned to a backwater role, she then gets put in charge of something like some front line again really quickly. So just, yeah. just to fill in a couple of gaps. So she's never volunteered for any yeah. of these missions where shit hits the fan <laughs> so goddamn hard that when she does successfully come back alive, when she does defy all odds, she is then awarded, hey, you're really good at this shit. We're going to promote you yeah. and give you, right. The, so the, the, so for instance, the training, the first, at the end of the training, she, she's just doing routine scouting. It's like her last thing she has yeah. to do before she decides to like, ah, okay, I'll just do this lightly, you know, just sneak around, fire around a bit near the lines, just do some stuff. However, at the same time, there is an enemy attack from other flying mages 
And Tanya's one versus like five at this point. And it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to try and survive. I've called in support when they're going to be here. It's like, oh, five minutes. Like, five minutes, I'm going to be dead. But it does, it's a really cool scene, actually, where yeah. Tanya's doing this, this sort of guerrilla war in the air against these five people. And in the end, she obviously can't beat them all. She's not she's not a one-man army. Um, she, she's what appears to be self-destructs, uh, but she, you know, cleverly does it so she doesn't quite die. And she thinks, oh, that's it. That's cool. I, I you know, I'm, I'm injured now. I'm wounded. I'm just going to go back to the uh, back lines and I'll be fine. That they're, you know, this, I didn't do that well. However, she defeated like four or five people in the air by herself and held the line for the people to turn up. So they give her like her, the highest medal of honor <laughs> for an air pilot. And it's, mm -hmm. it's like, wait, what? <laughs> and then gets reassigned to the like, a high duty because of it. And it, it no, oh, no, 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 no. She, she goes to the research. Uh, thing. Oh, so the research thing first, yes. and then it's because it's, it's out of order. Yeah, yeah it's it's. Uh, but the the stupid thing is, like with the research, she's put in a position where, at, by the end of it, she's begging to be on the front lines again. Yes, because the, the researcher is insane and gives her insane gear, which doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, it's gonna kill her, I think. But then God steps in and says, "Well, it'll work if you pray to me." So now she's because God's try, God is watching her still, and God wants her to pray to her and trust in God. Um, mm -hmm. Pray to yeah, pray to God, trust in God. So she has to do a little prayer every time to make her gear work, and it, it's very powerful because it's like this. She's the first one with it, like multi-core weapon, basically. And she has to do a prayer to make it work, even though she hates it every time. So like basically spitting bile every time she has to say one of these prayers to make the weapon work, and it's just yeah, it's good. So the the, the whole the whole you can tell from the show, the world is trying to fix. Or I'm not saying it's like made in the best where it's like it's trying to. The world is almost trying to rectify itself around Tanya. It's trying to make the war play out normally, and Tanya, not not in trying to, but it's almost like the the world is having to adjust and try and make the ending of the war normally. But it's through Tanya's actions that it's almost delaying it, even though she isn't trying to. She's just trying to survive and. And yeah. sit in the back lines. So it's it's a really interesting thing. So the protagonist is more the world, especially when you get things like other people who God has put in and believe in God and talk God talks to on the other side, who are clearly supposed to be, the, you know, you think the good guys or the protagonists, and you know it's like Americans and British and things. But Tanya just keeps ruining everything. <laughs> yep. Any more, Drew? Um. Just trying to think. No, I. I mean, it's it's a brilliant series. I'm so happy it's finally got its second season after, like this one coming out in 2017. So the second season, I, I think, is due next year sometime, or I'm not entirely sure when. But it's it's great that it's finally getting a second season. It is a brilliant series, and heck, she is one of the core members of Isekai Quartet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that that's how popular she is. I just think it's a bit mental that you know. He's <laughs> like, why is it taking so long to get a second season? Well, you, you know, there's a movie, right? Yes, and I have watched it. I'm sure of it because it does the Africa. It, it, I'm kind he of says that, but he probably hasn't. Have, have I seen it? I'm does, sure it, seen it, it does Africa and Russia? They go to Africa because that's the end of the show where like the for, the forces slip away because the. She realizes what's going to happen because of her knowledge of what happened in World War One, and tries to stop the, I think it's basically the French army leaving um, and going to their empire. And she tries to stop it. She says, "Look, yeah. like, launch me, I'll fight it." But they're like, "No, no, no, you're not allowed to armistice. You've got to stop it." So then she has to go to Africa to stop them, and she does it ridiculously quickly. I was like, "Oh, that's a shame." No, wasn't <laughs> it like the? It was a misinterpretation of the armistice. It was. It was like a case of. It was. Um, no, it wasn't an armistice. She it was a knew. ceasefire. It's, she, yeah, but she knew that. Yeah, it was a ceasefire before surrendering and things. But she knew yeah. that they would use that to evacuate their yes. army to continue yes. the war. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have watched the movie. And then they go to Russia. Yeah, I just. I, like, oh, I can't remember. Yeah. But it's it's brilliant. It's an absolutely brilliant series. So and I kind I kind of agree that she's an antagonist, but I do also feel that. Like She's a protagonist because you're rooting for her as well. So, no. I am. You don't root for her? Anyway. No, I root for her to destroy the world. Okay. And beat God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we've got to kill God somehow. You know? Yep. Okay. Okay, fine. Or at least punch him in the face. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, unless there's any questions or anything, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, which is more about an antagonist, but also has a pretty damn good protagonist. It's actually Castlevania. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about Dracula as well as Trevor. So one of the nicest things about Dracula is the humanization of the character, where, you know, he was living in isolation. He, um, I'm trying to think of my words correctly here. He was happy as he was, but then after a scientist came to, you know, be taught things that could be taken out into the real world, he was betrayed by humanity when his wife was killed. And I think as for motivation, you don't really need anything else, mm. right? Like as motivation goes that's that's pretty solid motivation to to act on anything so that's one of the reasons why i think dracula is brilliant and also he goes to the point of he, he basically just wants to die he doesn't want to live on this world without his wife but he is you know in, in his path to you know self-sacrifice he is also down well taking the rest of humanity with him what it says Lost. that prime video i'm like you know what i really should watch this I, no, oh, that's, I've got that's, it's it's very it's not, good it's not on prime, <laughs> prime. US. it's on netflix it says prime it's prime it's prime, video. No. Prime, prime video us probably let me check i can tell you <laughs> we don't get it that's not fair <laughs> well i think we still have it on netflix Mm, true. I hope we still have it on Netflix. So I was going to say, um, this would be a great time for a VPN plug if you had a sponsor for it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Only. Oh, I, won't, yeah. I, I won't turn on VPN. I don't want to mess up with corn. Um, crap, yeah, it? It, Castle. It's on uh, Amazon Prime, I see, US, but it is purchased like per episode. It's like two bucks per episode. Uh, so you have to buy uh, the whole series, I think. I think, from what I can tell. All right, one thing I am thinking of. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah. The season seasons are ten bucks each. So. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, too bad. It's, it's right. I can't even see it on Mars. I don't even have it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's. I, I. I hate how that works. I really, really do. Yeah. It, it's like the like, come on. It's the internet. Yeah. <laughs> like fuck yeah. say licensing why, why? man licensing. Mm -hmm. What fucking licensing? <laughs> List of, oh God, I really wish we stopped looking at the world as countries and not a planet. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, I I, I you know uh, I really love Dracula. I think he's an excellent character, and I feel less so towards Trevor. Right, I think Trevor has a lot of potential. Like he has a lot of character behind him, especially in season one. He wasn't there enough in oh god which season was it i think it was season three he wasn't in it enough but the thing that i kind of missed out on trevor is sort of like a more of a backstory because he makes so many references to his family to his family vault and things where um all the the weapons and everything are but at no point in time does it really explore who is Trevor Belmont? How did he get to where he is now? How did he get to the point of being in a tavern on the outskirts of... I can't remember the name of the... Um, God. can't remember the name of the location. And just trying to get completely and utterly smashed. Like, what happened to him? He's, um, he's kind of more of a Han Solo, but as the main character. Yes! Yeah, I, I, I very much agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that it would be nice to understand a bit more about his origin. Yeah. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want it to come back later on um, that, you know, oh, look, he, he, he was a, 
uh, a fuel smuggler, smuggler, and you know, like I, it's, I, it's, I, it's so weird. It's almost like Alucard is is the role of the main character, or the 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 type of main character you would see, but in the role of a side character. While yeah. while Trevor is a side character that's in the main character spot. It's so weird. It is very weird. I mean, there's going to be a se- uh, season, fifth season of. Uh, da, 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 da. Castlevania. Castlevania, yes. Well, it's gonna be uh, kind of a which, spin-off, but yeah. Well, it's canonically um, one after the other, so it, you know. Yeah. And that's in- it's interesting that we actually get Richter's history through the story of Trevor, mm-hmm. right? We know we will know more about Richter <laughs> <laughs> because of the first four seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, then we know about Trevor because he never had that opportunity. And that's that's one thing that I think is a bit of a disappointment. We know more about Camilla. We know more mm-hmm. about Dracula's mm-hmm. uh, war council than we know about Trevor. And that, that, to me, is just such a missed opportunity, I think. And also, all of these images are not season one. I am well aware they're not all season <laughs> one. For some strange reason, the system thinks they're all season one. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look into that. Um, on a slightly related tangent, the animation in that series is so good. Uh, like, I, uh, it's just, I mean, it's, it's everyone's talked about it, but the first fight scene between uh, Trevor and Alucard is just incredible. Yeah, it's like this I, weird fusion of Western uh, animation and and Jap- Japanese animation. It's so mm. good. I, I think one thing that I will always love, just as a really subtle thing, is when I can't remember her name. I, I just not Camilla, remember. but the other one, or the one on the screen no. right now. Yeah, the one on the screen right now. I just can't oh. remember her name. She leaves Alucard and Trevor alone <laughs> in a hovel, and you know, don't fight each other, sort of thing, and um. <laughs> Basically, the second she got, it was like Trevor says, "Like screw you," and yeah. Alucard just, response is, "Yes, fuck off." <laughs> it's just like it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like wow, these uh, two do not like each other. Their dynamic yeah. is very good. I will say, for like as weak as Trevor can be at, I think at points because yeah, they do sort of like not get as much into him or the reason why he's where he is. I think his interactions with the other characters are just so good. Yes. Like his his character may be not the strongest on its own, but with others, he's a fantastic like piece, essentially. Yes. He's got the charisma. Yeah. yeah. And I definitely th- fast. <laughs> I definitely think like certainly um by the end of season four, like, you know, you were invested. You were so invested because of the story of what Trevor was going through the entire way. Mm-hmm. Cool. Any questions or anything? No? I'm gonna be cool. so sad when Malcolm McDowell dies. Ah. Um, uh, uh, is it McDowell or Mc- yeah, Michael McDowell? The person who voiced Death? Oh. Malcolm? Malcolm? I I, 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 I don't know. I, I didn't he was also know he Dr. Dr. Sauron in uh, Star Trek Generations. Hmm. Oh. Oh, has he died? Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm gonna be mm. sad if he does die when he does die. Oh my god, Nazareth! Like, what? You are... <laughs> Nazareth saved the death from the start of the show. <laughs> yeah. We open with death. <laughs> yeah. We celebrate <laughs> vampire yes. death. Anyway. Right. So I'm gonna hand over to Sliv. Mm. What would you like to talk about next? Uh scroll through. Hmm. We can talk about B stars. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Talk about B stars. Um, Lego Shi. I really like the characterization of the B stars cast as like high school characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they did a fantastic job of being like, no, yeah, these are like actual things that people struggle with, deal with, talk about, like, um. Oh with like sexuality and like identity and also things of topics of racism and trying to fit in trying to be like a leader if you're talking with our dear friend um there's just so many good 
characterizations and I and Legoshi's like internal conflict with the literal beast that he can be that he knows he can be is I, I, I love that it's framed in the first episode because then as the series goes on you know it's like a continuous perpetual thing that he's always considering and he's very aware of it and he's very considerate of it so you know that that's like his struggle and you see him um, overcoming and like learning how to interact with and like take that into his life essentially this is another one that I've really got to watch it's it's <laughs> uh, so it's, would you say it's Zootopia but better yes that's oh, yeah, leagues literally. Better. <laughs> it is it is I mean like with Zootopia they they were like really hamming it down on the whole uh like a leopard can't change its spot sort of thing you know mm, um yeah. there's there's carnivores and there's herbivores and that there, there is no blind Never spot the twain shall mix. Mm -hmm. it's it's but like oh but the the you know the 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 ragtag, they they success, yeah. you know, the the mm. the underdog <laughs> undercut the expectations. Like it's a really nice way <laughs> in B stars where it's the polar opposite perspective. It's so typically the carnivals are always looked at as something to be feared, right? Because even the bigger carnivals scare the little carnivals. And as uh, Legoshi is a wolf, he himself, you know, scares even the, you know, the the dogs, the right. uh, the cats, the, you know, he, he is this really big, powerful character. And though he is trying to have the smallest presence in the school, and it's a really cool mechanism that he falls uh, in love himself with effectively the largest polar opposite you would expect and you know if if he fancied you know he could off her in a fraction of a heartbeat and that's something that the the world of B stars is constantly fighting is this stereotype that all carnivores are murderers and yeah so it's it's a really really good way of telling the story and especially this one character that wants to stay out of the alarm a limelight as much as possible um don't mind me yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just like, "What is going on there?" Nazem? Don't don't mind anyway, me. So, yeah, so you know, he he is uh, an endearing character, especially considering the dynamic between him and the the uh, main herbivore uh, Louis, who is constantly trying to stay in the spotlight. Who a character who is often extremely vicious to others. He is trying to. Oh God, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uses tries to use a lot of people for his gains, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, he's like, you know, you're nothing. You're just a carnivore, and mm -hmm. like it, it's again, it's really interesting how this one character who is supposed to be in a position of weakness appears to be the most arrogant obstinate dickhead <laughs> that you, you just want to see fail mm -hmm. to be honest yeah. i need to re-watch season one so i can watch season two i started just watching season two and i just like oh. i cannot follow what's going on i need to re-watch the first season <laughs> I didn't ah, maybe, we should, maybe we should watch that after a steins gate you know we've got vinland saga i want to watch fucking vinland saga <laughs> yeah i I do really like. I like also that a lot of the pressure on Lego Chief for his uh, of like his expectations comes from his peers, um, like the, which is a very realistic setting for him being in like a high school. That like yeah, a lot of his expectations placed on him are societal, and a lot of them are perpetuated by his peers. And some of them are also like other carnivores that are like, why aren't you man enough? Or you know, yeah, people reacting to him based on just you know his appearance or his. The fact that he's a carnivore. Um, there's obviously a ton of real world parallels 
with a lot of the theming and B stars. But yeah, it's it's very well done. But I will say that the real real world parallels are very muddied. Like you know, I can't distinct. Uh, so you know, yes, we're talking about the um, there's a metaphor in there somewhere about uh, race. You know, mm-hmm. but in all honesty, I can't easily pin it down. Right? Mm-hmm. It's it's it really does take that metaphor and make it its own. Mm-hmm. Right. So sure. and you know, but I will say Zootopia does not. Right. Yeah. Zootopia. Yeah. Uh, what's called mm-hmm. like you know makes the <laughs> you know this this might as well just be a giant neon sign. B stars mm-hmm. does a, a freaking excellent job. Uh, to, to borrow a well known so uh, internet uh, sort of image, it's Zootopia is like the tip of the iceberg, and B stars is everything that's hidden under underneath the water. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I will hand over. Was it was it Loz then Nazareth or Nazareth then Loz? I forgot the order that I was doing this in. I think I it was Nazareth. me. And, I think it was me and then yeah. Loz. I'm I'm torn because I want to talk about um, Legato in Trigun, but I also part of me also wants to talk about Eyes of Mars in as the concept of the entire movie is the protagonist against or antagonist against the viewer. Um. I'm I'm gonna say you need to do Trigun. I think I'm gonna go with Trigun. I think I'm gonna go with Trigun. Um, okay. So the thing about Legato is that he's not actually the main protagonist. There is somebody you know above him who's who's giving him his orders. Well, the antagonist. Giving him his orders. Sorry, yes, antagonist. Oh my gosh. Um, but but functionally, he is the main antagonist for a good chunk of the series. Um, and I, he's, he's so good at it. Like he's mysterious and, uh, but, but his, he's mysterious, but his motivations are very clear. Like he, you don't necessarily know why he's going to do, wants to do what he does until later, but, but you know what he wants. His goals are right there out in the open. He wants to make Vash suffer, not kill him, make him suffer. Um, and, and just the way he goes about it but with recruiting the gun ho gungs and uh you know putting them against vash and ma- putting vash in these impossible situations where he has to like because because vash's whole de- whole deal is he wants to save everyone he wants to he wants to save the butterflies and the spiders and legato keeps trying to put him in a position where he's going to have to kill somebody and it, it, he'll go literally to literally to any length to do it to the point I, I don't want to give it away but like yeah his 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 end is definitely tied into that uh, and, the, and the pass off to knives as the as the main character or main antagonist um yeah it's just it's so good I love I love the way he he pushes Vash um I always do this I always kind of peter out really fast. <laughs> no, I I kind of I kind of get where you're coming from, but again, it's it. I I He's so classy argue, while doing it. I want to argue against you because, to be honest, Legato is such a. He's a villain of the week. He he's uh, a henchman to Rita Repulsa. He's he's Goldar. He's he's like there's nothing to him, right? We don't know what made him choose to follow knives. We don't know. No, we do. Do we? What was what yeah. was his reasoning? Uh, it's it's because Vash destroyed his town. When was that disclosed? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was just. Disc- right? Am I am I imagining I that? I don't remember him revealing the motivation. Was oh yeah, because you blew up this town. I decided to go on a vendetta against you. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was because that's like a major part of Vash's backstory in general. Do we want to quickly look this <sighs> up? <laughs> good. <laughs> it did have that window open. I could reopen it. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, okay, fine. Uh, you you do that, and I'll, I'll continue down my train of thought. Like, I I find that. This has been really difficult to find a lot of characters that are worthy of either of these lists because 
a lot of the time when you have a show that has a good protagonist you, you typically have a good antagonist but when it comes down to um shows with fairly weak protagonists like i would even i would even argue that i think vash is a particularly weak uh protagonist i wouldn't say he's amazing right he's he's skilled sure he's a, uh, an ace gunman but you know there's just so much about vash that isn't truly explored hmm does laws sliv do, do you do you agree with that I cannot remember Trigon at all. Last time, when we <laughs> it has it, been it has been a hot show. minute since I've watched Trigon, but I remember really liking it. But I also don't particularly remember. Okay, feeling super attached to specific characters, so I it might that That's might fair. make sense then. So, <laughs> so apparently the reason he wants to kill Vash is because he worships uh, knives as a god. Like like yeah. knives knives recruited him, and essentially made him look at him as a god and so he will like the same way that he's a religious zealot who will do anything for his lord and savior and 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 to me that just it doesn't jive well you know it, it doesn't i don't understand why this character like what because we see no interaction between knives and any other character apart from vash the motivation between um, Legato or anyone to to hunt down and kill Vash, it doesn't make sense. Or to even try, like you know, oh, we're we're gonna get you to kill us. Like, fuck it. Why? What? What has Knives possibly done to warrant you committing suicide? I mean. He can turn his arm into a gun that can destroy, you know, cities. It's kind, yeah, of, but, kind of a, and he's immortal. He's kind of kind of a god, you know. Yeah. What is, no, no, why, no, no, why like, does anyone worship a god and do what they say? <laughs> no, but this this is the problem I have: the fact that these humans are not originally from this planet, right? Spacefaring technology has existed for we don't know how long. But apparently, as soon as we crash land on a wild, wild west planet, right, all logic goes out the fucking window. That's about right. <sighs> Trying to be cowboys up in this place. I mean, I it's it's hard to rebuild technology to get back into space when you don't have the facilities to to make the stuff. You have to make the facilities and have the people to work in there and and they're doing it with uh, how many of them died on the way in and how much of their technology got ruined on the way in and you know how many plants survived in the first place for them to use well just make lots of small little light bulbs there you go problem solved <laughs> yeah just, just learn it for yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's my take that's on um, Legato. Okay, uh, Loz, what's your next one? I haven't got any more. You haven't got any more? <laughs> no, that's why I told you, should we make your last round? I was like, stop with the round robin, just let people do what they want. Wow. No. Wow. Well, I could do one, but I'm like, I could do Scare tonight, but I just like, I was on that, and I was like, ah, he's just good fun. No, it's not, I wouldn't say he's an amazing great protagonist. He's just just enjoying things. It doesn't make you a good protagonist to want to talk about, really. Okay. Uh, I have one that I forgot about until and just now. <laughs> I feel on the list on the side here, is it wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon? Again, as a protagonist, Bell is nice and all, but he's just, you know, oh, he's, he just never gives up. And it's like, oh, let's, let's have Naruto up there. He just never gives up. It's like, okay. The real protagonist is... Uh, the real protagonist is Hesia's boobs. Hey, they stand out even, you know? <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> <laughs> so Loz, if you know, if you okay, so does anyone have any that they want to talk about? I think Sliv, you were trying to say something. Um, I have one that I didn't think about, so I didn't give you a name, but we um, may yet have it. But I, oh, well, I was thinking of um, the 
medicine seller and also the spirits that he fights in Mononoke. We do have Mononoke. Whoa! Oh, let's go. <laughs> I love this series. It's so I'll trust good. I'll track it down. Yeah, 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 I have faith. Oh no! Wait, you're talking about. No, I wait, think you're talking, talking about, about Mononoke, not Mono not, uh, Mushishi. not Princess Mononoke. No, okay, Mononoke. okay, okay, never mind. I don't think. Yeah, I, don't I was know like, you might not have Mononoke because that's a little. Yeah, it's a weird no, no, cut. No. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh well. No yeah, uh, love that one. If you if you want more stuff that's like the environment or the things are the antagonist, that's a good one. The protagonist is like a static foil, and he tries to solve the the evil sins essentially that people have done in their lives that they're hiding and then once he reveals the demon he destroys it and that's what it is the demons are the antagonists but they're like they're often like told through the environment the art is wild it's such a good series it's getting a movie too uh next year so i'm very excited Ooh. yeah okay, is it gonna be is it that. gonna be a movie that recaps the series or is it gonna be um like a new new telling or new story i think it's a new movie. telling yeah. yeah, and the series is only I think like twelve episodes. It's very short. Oh, not bad. Um, very, very good though. If it's very odd, like the art style is very weird. I um, think it's very reminiscent to um, oh, the Count of Monte Cristo. Yes, yes, oh. it does have a lot of County Monte. Yeah, it's, it does have a lot of that. It's just like like the harsh clashing colors and the heavy stylization. It's oh, I'm into very it. drastic. You yeah, got it's me. super cool. Hell yeah! <laughs> I love I love um, Genkutsuo. Yeah, it's it's very good. I it's very weird, but I like the weird that it is. I think one honorable mention I'd like to give is actually I can't truly uh, support it, but because it was cut short, is uh, Dead Man Wonderland. The antagonist from that wasn't given enough opportunity to properly explore, and I do intend to fully read the whole thing. Um, it, it, it was such a, a nice character to have where effectively you know you got two sides to the same coin and the the villain just seems to be all powerful going around doing whatever the heck it wants but always returns to the same nest or nesting grounds which you know is this effectively this tournament show which is buried deep behind you know, uh, layers of complexity with a prison that's effectively a theme park. It, I don't know if, I don't know if I want to say that the show was too early for its time and if it was to be done now, you know, people would pick it up better, but it's, it's always go, it's constant, it doesn't stop and both Loz and I just like, you know, we, we grimace at the fact that it didn't get the end it deserved. So, so good, good, good show, but possibly don't watch it because it'll frustrate you. Yeah, I mean, I I started reading the the manga. Um, it's just trying to find time to to do so. I'm also catching up on. Oh God, Chainsaw Man and what's the name of the other one? Uh, one Punch Man as well. So, you know, it it's. I think people will enjoy Dead Man Wonderland, and I think people would go away and continue to read it. But you know, it, it's just a crying shame it didn't get fully realized. Does anyone have anything else that they want to add, or should we move on? Give a honorable mention to a seat on the side there, Genius Prince Guide to Raising Nation Out Debt. Mm -hmm. I think I would have given it more about halfway through the season. I'd like to see where it goes to the second season. I did feel it rushed a bit towards the end. I did like that this is a guy, really smart guy, but really lazy. So he's not <laughs> a cool protagonist. And he's he's a prince, but he just wants to sell the kingdom the time, so he can just get money to live off it and live, you know, buy a nice estate <laughs> yeah. and just live off in luxury. But because it, you think the prince would be able to do that, but he can't because the king is infirm. We never see the king. And so he's he's forever having to fix the kingdom and deal with it. It's a it's a very niche king, little kingdom at the top between warring, not ro slightly warring, slightly hostile nations. So, you know, he has to deal with all that stuff. At the same time, it's not really a rich kingdom he's been given. So he doesn't really want to do anything ever. Yeah. But at the same time, he's really intelligent and uh, just, it's nice to see it, the way he outmaneuvers his enemies. It isn't 
and sometimes towards the, towards the later episodes it did get a bit meh, a bit contrived, but it's really nice to see that it's through his planning and um, forward thinking. Not just he pulls out his ass. it's clear what he was trying to do and what, why, yeah, that's quite a logical thing. He just tricked people in a clever, simple way, and so he's forever coming up with simple, quick plans that <laughs> achieve beyond his measure uh, and he's, he's just trying something simple and he achieves a great victory and it's like oh but i just wanted to stay at home and fix the kingdom and sell it so it's just fun to see him work around but yeah towards the end uh it did just go a bit too quick in my opinion so yeah he was he was a cool protagonist he definitely was because he wasn't for all the things that for all the problems that are set upon him he doesn't try he he is better than them he's he's a man at a time almost it's sort of a medieval period, but he, he outthinks all of his opponents without even trying. But at the same time, he, he just he doesn't like look down on them. And so so he expects them to be as good as him, but they're not. And it, so it just it plays out quite well. Towards the end, though, it just I would like to see a second season on it because I know I've got one season. But yeah, we'll see. But the, the, the premise of this guy was really cool. I think the thing that I liked about him the most was the fact that his superpower was being strategic. What? Yeah. Yeah. You know, as opposed to like, I can do magic super good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. If he like, if he really put his mind to it, he could probably conquer the entire continent. But he just doesn't want to because it'd be just yes. work. So yeah. he, he. But he still thinks that in strategic levels, you say. Yeah. Uh, I do have another honorable mention. <sighs> right. I I remember enjoying the show really really well, which is BNA, a brand mm. new animal. And I see all of these screenshots like, yep, I remember that bit. I remember that bit. I remember that bit. I cannot for love nor mem uh, money remember the main character's name. Damn Cue Loz to go look that up and feed it to me on the side. It, she is Tanuki, a... Tanuki girl. That's her name. Tanuki girl, yeah. She is an incredibly interesting character. She, you know, she, she shares very similar character qualities as a character with Ryoko from Kill la Kill. I mean, Hell is also a Studio Trigger production. You know, it's no surprise that there are similar qualities. Yeah, I think the only drawback is that effectively she is Ryoko, but uh, she doesn't have it set to 11 the entire time. So, but you know, still a brilliant character. Is Ryoko if Ryoko was one of the um, the bad guys who'd been forced to live with the good guys? No, that doesn't sit well at all, Nazareth. What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> anyway, uh, anyone else got anything that they want to add? No? No? Um, I would like to say I do really like the cast in Spy Family. I just don't know where the story goes yet. So I kind of don't have like an opinion on if I think they're really good, but like, man, I love those two characters. <laughs> they're, I, they're so good. Um, two, two, well, two. three, I guess. Three. Yeah, three. three for Anya. Um, I just, um, wow, I'm blanking on names today. Uh, Anya, uh, Anya Lloyd, Lloyd, and Lloyd, and your, your, your. your. Um, I love that Yor is like just full head empty sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, she does is, one thing she is, and she does it really yeah, well. She does one thing and she is probably the best person in the world at it. And also, you know that if she, if someone does something to slight her, she is probably going to send them through a roof because she is just <laughs> that fucking powerful. And God but, forbid they fuck with Anya. Yeah. But she is so dumb <laughs> sometimes, yeah. and I love it. It's so good. The dynamic between her and Lloyd is very cute. I love I, their like meat. It's I, it's very fun. <laughs> I, th I think it's better to say innocent than dumb. Sure. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The innocent yeah. is fair. I just like yeah. these like head empty vibes. Is my is oh, I'm just like I love this. <laughs> I I, I or, or simple. It's like she just doesn't complicate things. She just yeah. yeah. Simple. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. knows what she she wants to do. Yeah. Oh, she this gets... is this this is a method of physical therapy by beating the shit out of my patient. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That must yeah. you know work somehow. That must, 
Sure, whatever. For, for a very deep. physical person like her, it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I can, I could, I could get behind some of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Lloyd's just over here, like hyper processing every situation because that's just been his whole life. It do, I just, yeah. just gonna, just gonna say, does, does anyone remember how that one guy from TikTok re overreacted to this one specific scene? Oh God, yep. so, yeah. <sighs> do you know about that slivery toe? I don't think so. No. So if you notice, when when like he's holding up Anya, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of red blush under Anya's eyes, mm. and so they're like, "Oh my God, this is this is sexualizing children." <sighs> yeah, she's yeah, you're child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. like the child, yeah, she's a child who's happy. <laughs> yeah. you know, he's happy that it, you know, her dad is is happy. It was, it's like. Yeah. I love just like the small <sighs> moments of character growth too. There's, mm -hmm. I guess it's like a minor spoiler too for like a few for like an episode, but the the fact that he like for anybody who doesn't want this uh, quits smoking because he's now like with a kid mm, is yeah. very cute. There's so many good like and like you know he's that. like when, when's he doing oh, that's that? that's one of the newer ones. That was after one of the, he meets up with one of his old spy operatives and he's like smoking to like as the cover and then just yeah. immediately starts coughing. Yeah. And he's just like, he's like, uh, he mentions that he quit because he has a kid. And I'm like, ah, I like this. <laughs> like, he, he wants to, he wants to be a good dad for the mission, but then he wants to be a good dad just because he wants to be a good dad, which is very nice. Yeah. So obviously that it, uh, the, the, the show is so great because obviously all three of them well, want something from the creation of the family unit, mm -hmm. but well, Anya just wants a family, so you know yeah. still, they all want something different from the creation of family unit. But they, yeah. at the same time, they all want to do a good job of being a family unit. But then it, especially with Lloyd and your, it just mm -hmm. slowly they realize how they actually they, they don't like. Oh yeah, I really enjoy this now. It's a really wholesome and subtle way that it comes upon them that they mm -hmm. just work. So they'll they'll go an extra mile for their what they perceive as fake family because they actually see, without realizing it it becomes the most important thing to them and it's mm -hmm. really wholesome the way it works forward for that it's yeah. a, it's a slight it's a slice of life it's just that life is uh, spies and assassins yes yeah I love that <laughs> on it it's just so good oh it's so good <laughs> uh, I mean me and you know both redhead and the manga uh, it's good mm. still good loads of good stuff to come are you up to I'm not up today you up today Zeno oh no no wait <laughs> I I. I hit one point. I'm like, I'm putting this down for a while. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I say for me, I, you just get tired because it's just there's there's a lot. There's a lot of manga out for. I think they'd almost mm. got enough for three seasons at the moment. Especially if they do see they, they also do great things. With the anime. I know it's about the protagonist, but that the if you've not read the manga, do you know the bit with the episode with the castle and all that, yes. that amazing oh, that, yeah. right? Yes. The whole amazing scene with like mm -hmm. all the stuff in the castle. Is not mm -hmm. in the manga. In the manga, they just go, I want a castle. They go to the castle and then they just go to the ballroom and there's like a, the end bit uh -huh. where just with your and then it's, just, it's over in like two panels and it's like, yay, yeah, Anya is castle. Whereas the whole mm -hmm. thing with the, the little tests Anya's and the castle. quizzes, all of that is the anime only and it's just beautiful. Uh -huh. really. But at the same yeah, time, I just get that. bored of when like the anime does the whole episode or the dodgeball one. It's just like, yeah. oh God. There, it, the filler episode being the dodgeball one was a little rough that was like well we didn't need this but whatever yeah i'll take well, it <laughs> in the, the weird thing is in the manga it's only like one chapter it's like you know it doesn't it doesn't have enough content in it to fill a whole episode you yeah know? they ended up making like they ended up making dragon ball z references to to fill that up yeah yes yeah and um so it's not much of a spoiler though really though that the reason why they have it's in the manga there is a sort of a mini big arc coming and obviously they didn't want to fit it into season one and they'll, they'll probably push it to the first the first section of season two so they were like i just imagine they looked at it and went right if we we've only got like one episode we can't really do this justice in one episode of season one so we'll do a bit of padding here and there so that it gets pushed to season two mm -hmm. and then we can if this does well we can do it do it its proper justice so it should be good it should be good okay interesting yeah yeah i i do really like this anime <laughs> it's been one of the only ones i've watched recently and i really dug it so. oh it's so good it's so good. <laughs> right. I think it is time for us to move on with the rest of the show. So uh, we, we have spoken at length about uh, protagonists and antagonists. We've come up with some really good ones. Uh, Nazareth betrayed us with that one with Legato. No, I'm joking. I'm teasing. You. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now it's time to move on to the supporter questions. So, uh, Zrugal asks, before I read out Zrugal's question, I just want to ask, 
uh, our lovely audience to smash that like button and leave a comment down below. I promise we read each and every comment. If you can't think of anything, tell us uh, if you chose, like, if you choose to be isekai if given the option, or alternatively, who you think is like a good uh, protagonist or antagonist in a series, mm -hmm. and whether or not they if, can beat Goku. Would if I think I think. If I didn't have to be hit by Truck Coon, if I could just, you know, peacefully transition, <laughs> uh, I, I may not mind being isekai'd. What if it was a case of I slapped you really, really hard? Ah, uh, Truck Coon slap, okay. Yeah. Okay, so Zrugal also asks, can you give us any hints or previews about next week's episode? Next week yes. on Trampicast. If you watch all yes. the way to the end, we Nassim always drink some always beer. Do. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Zeno uh, makes mistakes. Next next week's episode is what mistakes do I make? Everything. Ah, damn. He caught me. So uh, next week's episode is about uh, what's called effectively reviewing top ten lists. Yeah, so, that's one of my ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So Loz came up with this uh, a little while ago, and we were planning on doing it when we were going to do the we ended up doing the was it the plots episode instead oh yeah I think so. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think it was the plots episode instead um and like we we spent like a little time uh, a couple of nights ago going through uh, collecting loads of youtube videos of top 10 anime of x criteria and we're going through those kind of trying to work out like what to comment on and things like that some the, of the, the, the lists yeah. the, you see loads of them the, 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 the yeah. main one would be like the watch mojos top 10 anime you should watch things like that and I was like yeah. are these any good let's do our opinions on yeah. them let's go through them do we go what the hell is this this is what is this <laughs> or is it yeah. and, and uh, we yesterday we put together a list which had things like top 10 anime battles you'll never believe and top 10 most Etchy anime you must watch. It's like so we'll yeah, go through some of those. Yeah. So we, we we have an extensive list and that's yeah, so that's the plan. Uh so moving on, ask for uh, my deep lore asks Jobless Reincarnation. Is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon? And Steinsgate. You can only pick one uh, to show to someone else. Which one is it? So my first question to Sliv is have you seen all three of those? Nope, that's why my answer is Steins Gate. <laughs> <laughs> that is the objectively right answer for me. <laughs> uh, I think as much as I loved Jobless Reincarnation, I, 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 which I would recommend, uh, I think I think I, I don't, I'd also have to say Steins Gate because it's just oh, I love that sci-fi aspect to it. It's oh, Laws. I think it's a very hard question because they're all three are very good. Mm. I think I would have to assess the person I'm taught. I'm trying. It's just like it's a show to someone else. Now, if this was like a non-anime fan, I'm going to guess what we're trying to do with here. If I knew that they liked Lord of the Rings, I'd probably go with Jobless Reincarnation. Uh, if I knew that they were just wanted something, you know, they weren't too much of it. Maybe something simple. Maybe um, is it is wrong? It wrong? To in the dungeon. Yeah. But then, if I know that they didn't really want fancy, or they liked sci-fi, or they wanted something that starts off based in they, they love dramas and things. I probably pick Steins Gate. I am yeah. in agreement with Laws. I feel the easy bet is Dungeon. I think that's the easiest thing to guarantee success, but I am completely in the same boat as Laws. I don't know. I think the fan service in, in Dungeon... I mean, there's not it's not super huge, but to somebody who's not an anime fan, they might look at it and go, uh, I don't know about that. You deserve a smack. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, ask about my deep law. Also asks if Food Wars, the in, characters in food, wars. in food Wars, the characters strive to make the most delicious dishes. We know how you all feel about pineapple on pizza. Yeah, it's disgusting. But what about pineapple on a bacon cheeseburger? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't eat beef oh so wow a veggie bacon cheeseburger 
Uh, I mean, if it was a chicken burger. Uh, chicken, no. chicken burger. I, no, I just taste. All I would taste is the sodding pineapple. No, that's the reason why I don't <laughs> want it on pizza. I feel like when you get really good pineapple, like I, I'm originally from Hawaii. When you get like really good fresh pineapple, and you can have it on something like that, I think it does elevate things in a certain way. But I think most of our general perceptions of pineapple is that it's just sweet and overpowering, and it is in most cases. I think it's okay on a burger. I think it also depends on if you like cold toppings on a burger mm. because I think the main argument against pineapple pizza besides taste is that it's hot or like warm fruit essentially on a pizza which I think is a valid reason to not like it. But if you would be okay with like small slice of like cold pineapple on a burger like a maybe. tomato but pineapple. Yeah essentially yeah. Loz is confused by this heresy. <laughs> that's that's me understanding the perspective. That's not my opinion, though. <laughs> I'm a garbage person and I'll eat everything. So, yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, okay, so Loz, Nazareth, do you have anything to add? Oh, no, I'd, I'd eat it. Like, like, like I said, I'm, not like, I'm like Silverito. I don't I need anything. You disgust me. I'll try anything once, except except anchovies. Oh, no, I did try those, actually. I'll never try them again. Yeah. Anchovies are nice. Shut up, you. Anyway. I like solid salt. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. Like salt and goo. Yeah. Mm. Like Where's the goo? Salt. They're all, all squishy and gooey. Do what else I is squishy and gooey? Pineapple. <laughs> right. Uh, Eldritch Dweller <laughs> of England asks... Uh, having just uh, finished watching Banished from the Heroes Party, I decided um, to live a quiet life in the countryside. It begs the question, what's the longest and most specific anime series title you can remember? Oh, I watched fucking... that. Have we watched that? No, I don't think so. Huh. Oh, God, what's the longest? I don't know about anime, but I know there was like about like a year or two ago somebody was showcasing the longest light novel name ever, and it was like a paragraph. The only one I actively remember is Is It Wrong to Try and Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? And it's pretty only long. Be only because... No, no, no. Not because of its length, but only because it's a series I fully enjoy and recommend to other people. Uh... There is the one that Laws... Well, uh, I found a top ten on it. If you want me to read them out, go on. <laughs> Shits and giggles. Go on. Top oh, number ten. Is it wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon? Nine. Do you love your mom and her two-hit multi-target attacks? Oh, yeah. Eight. I hate that series. Yeah. No matter how I look at it, it's you got your you guys' fault. I'm not popular. Seven. Never I couldn't become it. a hero, so I reluctantly decided to get a job. That was the other one that I, I can't remember the sorry, I couldn't remember the full title of, but that was the other one. Yeah. We still don't know the name of the flower we saw that day. No idea. I want you to make a disgusted face and show me your underwear. What? what? My mental oh. choices are completely interfering with my school romantic comedy. <laughs> no, no, no. Say that one again. My mental choices are completely interfering with my school romantic comedy. My mental choices... I think that might be a literal translation because I think that series is called something else in English. If I don't successfully pick up 420 girls, I'm going to die in a lot of different ways. What the fuck? 420 uh, blazer. World end. <laughs> what do you do at the end of the world? Are you busy? Will you save us? Oh yeah, okay. I remember hearing that one. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. <laughs> hey. Uh, the story in which I was kidnapped by a young lady's school to be a sample of the common people. What the fuck? Go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Uh, does anyone wow. else have anything to add? No? I'm stunned. Okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, Eldritch. I can't remember the full name because now there's a scroll there. Eldritch, Eldritch Dweller of England also asks. Is it many an okay. For some reason, I thought there were two A's in there for a second. Ah. Okay. And, and turns out there were none. Uh, many animes these days offer some uh, form of harem or just a love triangle to make them uh, make the fan service or uh, the drama better. 
At this point in time, having watched as much anime as you have, which of these two choices would you prefer if the plot were basically the same either way? A, a full harem, sorry, full on harem where multiple women compete for the protagonist's affection with cliche fan service moments and character development. Or two, a straightforward romance between the protagonist and the honest female lead that grows and fulfills over the entire first series. I'm going to be honest, and as a connoisseur of harem anime, it's the first one. Mostly because hijinks ensue and it's fun. As a connoisseur of harem anime, I'm going to say, why not both? Because it was one of the two. You can't, you can't, it's one of oh, two. I think you can! <laughs> There isn't a third option that says both. They're uh, both. Can I, if you can and, say both, can I say neither? Oh, get out. <laughs> See, this is why you don't <laughs> add a both option, Lars, because people just decide not to play. <laughs> Sliv, do you dare answer this question? <laughs> is it which do I prefer? Yes. Ugh. Either the women decide to you know, compete for the affection of the main character and do stupid shit, or there's actually a rom-com element to it. Mmm. I feel like the second one. Fair. I'm not huge on harem anime. Fair. Yeah, I think, if, I think if I had to pick it, it would be the second one. If you put a wow. gun to my head and said I had to do it. <laughs> wow, that that's that's nasty for you. Anyway, so moving on to the comments section. So as Rugal says, one of my favorite gags in Skeleton Knight was Ark, sorry, was Ark would uh, geek out over something and the elf character would explain it away by going, yeah, he does that sometimes. That was, those were pretty good. Yep, completely agree he's, with that. He just, he just kind of was like, yeah, he just, he just does that. He, we, don't, we don't talk about it anymore. Yep. When I heard the question, which ancient god would you choose? I immediately th uh, thought of Smite and my favorite character from there. Sol, maybe, or... Sir Sir Nun Sir Nunnus? Sir Nunos? I don't know. Or maybe Al Kang or perhaps Kukulkan? Kukulkan? Okay. Kukulkan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And then the final mm -hmm. comment from Zrugal is this podcast podcast is a must watch. Only if YouTube would tell others. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. Oh. What? I hit the must watch, but it's it's hidden behind. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, scene. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Strombus Voidshell says, uh, Ah, nice. My favorite anime podcast. And an introduction to Bear. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We almost missed the Rito, I think, this time. But yeah. Dino saved it. Dino pulled it out of the water. Uh, Nick of the Evans fire. says, My hecking God, Nazareth. What? I'm literally crying from laughter. What did you do? So that was when I picked Zeus as my if I became a god, oh uh, god. and and decided I would um uh screw Fuck my way to the top. Done. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so so for Sliv's benefit, we were asked the question uh if uh what you call it, you were a demigod, like who would your parent be? And I specifically said not Zeus because I didn't want uh to be like half some random thing he ended up sleeping with, and that's what Nazareth went with. And also have like three hundred other siblings that yeah. are all other very different things. Yeah. yeah. Three of them are trees. <laughs> I was in a field one day and there was this cow and I'm like, all right, Zeus, you can like stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Right. And now it's time to move on to the best segment of the show and watch everyone is here for the memes. So you can find uh, what's called all these memes from Reddit, like, uh, you know, we are we good animes, animes and anime memes. Uh, I don't think as it has them from anywhere else. And also on twitter.com slash campi underscore cast, we do three memes daily. So, unless I forget. You're late. Yeah. So, Nazareth's first meme. Is invisible. Didn't appear. Did you break it? No, oh, is it broke. hidden behind? It's hidden behind the back backdrop slides, which... No, 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 no. I know what's wrong. You didn't turn it back on. Just on the left. Just turn them back on. Oh, shoot, you're right. The meme is that there is no meme. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. uh, right. So my first meme, uh, me on Monday morning, my choice is the night before. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Uh, I know this, it's Zenitsu. It is, it is not Zenitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen oh, Demon no. Slayer? No, but I know it's it's now on my list because everyone raves about how good season three is. Um, yeah. I got like, yeah, I got like th th four episodes in, and I was like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, and all I know is it didn't keep with it. All I know is Inosuke is the best. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your dreams have come true. You live in the abyss. <laughs> oh my god! No. Yep. <sighs> Uh, yeah. Sorry, Slim, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than Jahi. <laughs> I, I understand better now with context. <laughs> Jojo Bridge! <laughs> <laughs> threatening. Very threatening. Oh, oh, I love Jojo Bridge. I don't get it. It's the shadows being cast. It's on the, little, the, the little threatening yeah. marks that they put around characters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazingly subtle. Whose who's stand is this bridge? <laughs> yeah. We already have a we have an electrical tower. Whose is this? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh... brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh LaCroix Recoil. Uh... Uh, the character on the left uh, is basically a hacker girl. And often wears baggy <laughs> clothes. And there you go. Then on the right is yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh god! Finally, this girl is my. Oh, so apparently this girl is my penis. Normies terrified. Weebs. Yeah. So what? Confused. Uh, no. No, I think just that's kinda, confused. Kinda, nah, just kind of so what. <laughs> I'm gonna have to replace you with uh with Loz to do these memes because like uh anyway <laughs> my first meme Zeno 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 he has not done an Attack on Titan meme that's in a true while. that's true that's uh, true anyway, oh, I've, I've, I've got right. I've got I've got a bunch ready to go just at any moment I hate you uh, right, I think so I'm saving I think I'm saving them for April Fools though right so <laughs> imagine showing this image to someone in 2017. Uh, what's going on yeah I, so, I unironically love the vast variety of crossovers in Fortnite because you don't know if it's a joke anymore if someone says something like Ariana Grande killed me with a pickaxe while I was playing as Darth Vader. <laughs> like, no, that's the thing. Yep. 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 No, too, that's too bad real. Like, too bad it's still oh. Fortnite, though. Okay. It's fine. Uh, I've, I've come around on it. I'm, I'm under the opinion now that I'm just like, you know what? Good for them. Just, <laughs> just all chaos. Just throw everything in. Yeah, yeah. I want to see it. <laughs> My second meme is uh, me watching an anime and liking one of the characters. They die a few episodes later. <laughs> it's me. I'm the knight. <laughs> I don't like this image because I'm in it. <laughs> uh, how the eyes in Ruto <laughs> seem to work. Lars, please explain. True. Is, true. Let's just say people have plug and play eyes, and that's how it is, seems to be. It's like, okay, I'll give take these eyeballs out, and then I'll give them to another character, and then they will mature them for me, I... and then I'll plug them back in my head, and then, oh no, my eyes are going blind because I'm using too much. Don't worry, I'll find my brother or twin or something and take their eyeballs to be my spare set of eyes I, I don't I yep mm. yep that's the Ruto for you that's my next me eyes off plug and play uh when I finally <laughs> managed to sleep eight hours <laughs> <laughs> this is my perfect form <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep oh, oh so good. I feel my fifth that theme. so deep uh, we got the one uh, piece <laughs> coming soon, Netflix adaptation, <laughs> and then Kakyoi just, waking up screaming. Just screaming. <laughs> is, that, is that official art? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't but care. I, it's, it can't be much better. Oh. And then my last meme, Isekai <laughs> protagonist, Kazuma. <laughs> Out of interest, have you seen Konosuba Sliv? No. Nope. Oh. oh, you've got to. You've I'm got bad. to. It's it's like you know should be top of your list, Konosuba. Okay. Anyway, that and the uh, dress up darling were 
high up there, so. Yeah. Uh, like Distance drawing is actually pretty good. good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, and this is from, this is from Nazareth, who detests slice of life shows. Yep. Right? Mm. Yep. Nazareth properly yep. hates them. Anyway, so that is it. Uh, sorry. Next week, we are doing the top 10 lists. Uh, are there any good ones? Actually, no. Wasn't wasn't there... Um, what was the, the title I wanted to give it? Uh, oh, actually. Oh, the time yeah. I was watching an anime top 10 list and was left wanting. Yes. Yep. Yep. There you go. Anyway. Top uh, 10 anime top 10 list to leave you disappointed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, Sliv, thank you so much for being on. It's been lovely having you on. Uh, for having me. You know, thank you very much for enlightening us and our audience. And yeah, you know, so see you it's time to see you sometime sooner and notice me, Senpai. <laughs> yes. Probably. Right. So uh, thank you all for watching slash listening. And now it's time to bottoms up and Kanpai!